Good morning. Good morning. What's all this? Your results. Congratulations to all. I am confident you will all achieve your goals. So young man, what are your aspirations? I want to do robotics. Ideally from the best institute in the US. And you young lady? Sir, I love kids and I would love to learn pediatrics. I feel Boston is the best place for that. Sumit, what about you? Back home to India for medicine. Good. I am sure you will all achieve your aspirations. Be it in India or anywhere. Keep in mind, your first challenge is the entrance. Whether it's IIT, JAI, SAT or NEET. You have to learn from the masters. Brilliant Qatar is the passport to your success. We undertake coaching for regular and repeat batches and tuition for board examinations. Brilliant Education Center, Doha, Qatar. Yes, hello, hi, good evening, good evening all. Yes, yeah. Please tell me, uh, can you hear us? Audible or not, please check. Comment. Comments, please. Yes, yes. Yeah. CID Musa is there. <laughs> Atul, yes, <laughs> Atul, good evening. Yeah. So today, like, we are continuing from where we stopped yesterday. Yes. So, we are already, right? Optics, uh, yeah. modern <laughs> physics, semiconductor, and EMAs. So these are the chapter that we are going to cover today. So without wasting time, I think we can start, sir. We can Let us yes. finish it quickly. And, uh, uh, with a small difference, we start with the ray optics, right, sir? Yeah. Ray 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 EM waves, we'll do uh, we'll Along do with semiconductor. Yeah. Together. Like, yeah. Okay, so right. straight to the optics. So, with your permission, dear students, we are going to start with ray okay. optics. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sir, right. you. Thank you. Thank you, So, let's have the analysis of last 10-year paper. You can see these are the topic. Almost equal weightages. You can see from all the topics, like the first one is from reflection. Reflection, there are some questions. Second one is refraction. Refraction uh, means the basic ideas of refraction. Then third is uh, total internal reflection. There you can see a hype. So total internal reflection, always there is a question. And then refraction at a spherical surface. Refraction through a prism. Optical instruments. So all areas are equally important from this chapter. So just, we have nothing to skip. Let's move on to the questions now. This is our question. We are starting from number 51 because 50 question has been completed yesterday. An object is kept in front of a concave mirror of focal length 15 centimeter. The image formed is real and three times the size of the object. Calculate the distance of the object from the mirror. So you can see this is a 2019 board question. From, uh, from By seeing the question itself, we got an idea. It is from reflection. Reflection is uh, the same type of question you studied in grade 10 also. So let's check. An object is kept in front of a concave mirror. It's given the mirror is concave. Of focal length 15 centimeters. So you know that the sign convention is very important in optics. So it is a concave mirror. What is the sign of focal length of a concave mirror? Concave means no matter whether it is a lens or a mirror, concave means the focal length is negative. So it is given focal length is equal to, we can take it as minus 15 centimeter. It is given in the question, minus 15 centimeter. Now the image formed is real and three times the size of the object. Three times the size of the object means what is the significance of that three? That three is the magnification. So we can say m is equal to what? Three. But there is a point to be noted. Concave mirror, it form a real image. So concave mirror is forming real image means, you know concave mirror is like this. Real image is forming means it will be an inverted image as well. Real inverted image. That means what is the sign of magnification? You know that if it forms an erect image, magnification is positive. Inverted image means magnification has to be negative. Very good. So M is equal to minus 3. Magnification is equal to minus 3. Now what they are asking, calculate the distance of the object from the mirror. Object distance. We can use mirror formula, but before that, what is the significance of this? You know magnification of a mirror, we have a formula, m is equal to minus v by u. That minus v by u is given as minus 3. So minus 3 is equal to minus v by u, which means v is equal to what? 3u. Now you can apply this result in our mirror formula. What is mirror formula? 1 by f is equal to 1 by u 
plus 1 by v. Substitute and tell me the answer. We need to find u. Yes. What is the answer? Please comment. Yes, I can see that. The answer is minus 20 centimeter. Very good, very good. Venkatas, Smriti, Hanna. Yes, the answer is minus 20 centimeter. Object distance u will be equal to minus 20 centimeter. Simple question. Simple question. Don't make silly mistake. The mistake that you can make is in sign convention. So I hope this is a very clear question. Like now, from reflection part, you, you know that the important topic is like mirror formula derivation. Uh, relation between R and F, F is equal to R by 2, that derivation and then image formation. These are the main area from reflection part. Okay, let me go to the next question number 52. 52. Look at this. A monochromatic light of wavelength 589 nanometer is incident from air on a water surface. If mu for water is 1.33, find the wavelength, frequency and speed of the refractor light. This is actually a simple question. Let's check what is happening. Monochromatic light of wavelength 589 nanometers incident from air to water. So let's assume this is air and here is water. So the light is traveling from air to water. Okay. Air to water. You know that when it travels like the medium is changing. So wavelength is given. Initial wavelength is given. I am taking it as lambda 1. Lambda 1 is 589 nanometer. What they are asking? Find the wavelength, frequency and speed of the refracted light. So just recall the idea. What is the relation between refractive index and wavelength? Can you tell me? Yes. Refractive index and wavelength, they are inversely proportional. Lambda is inversely proportional to mu or n. Or we can say that n into lambda. Where n is the refractive? index n lambda is a constant or n lambda is constant means what we can write n1 lambda 1 is equal to what n2 lambda 2 this is the formula this is the relation what is n1 refractive index of first medium what is the first medium here first medium is air what is refractive index of air 1 n2 is water for calculation you know that it is given 1.33 but for our simple calculation you instead of writing 1.33 you can make it as 4 by 3 it will be easy 4 by 3 is 1.33 only. Okay, this is n2 value. Lambda 1 is given 589. So we need to find lambda 2. So lambda 2 is equal to n1 lambda 1 by n2. You can calculate along with me and tell me the answer. Tell me the answer. n1 is 1. Lambda 1 is 589 by n2. n2 is 4 by 3. So we get 3 by 4 into 589 nanometer. How much it is? Can you comment? Anybody got the answer? 3 by 4, that is 0 0.75 into 589. It is approximately, I think, yeah, 441. I can see Saad Nawaz got the right answer. So it is 441.75 nanometer is the answer for the wavelength. Wavelength will be 441.75. Yes, Venkata also got the right answer. Fine. Next question is, they are asking what is the frequency? Frequency. Before calculating frequency, you know that. When a light travels from one medium to another medium, will there be any change in its frequency? When light travels from one medium to another medium, you know that its wavelength will change, its speed will change, but frequency remains the same. So frequency remains the same means they are asking what is the frequency of light in water. But you no need to calculate water separately. You can calculate frequency in air itself. So what is the relation? Nu is equal to C by lambda. Isn't it? Nu is equal to C by lambda. So just substituted frequency nu only. We need to find C in air. It is 3 into 10 power 8. Speed of light. Divided by what is the wavelength? 589 nanometer. That means 10 to the power minus 9. Can you tell me the answer? 3 by 589. 3 by 589 into 10 to the power. This will go up. So we get 10 to the power 17 hertz. So, 3 by 589, uh, it will be approximately 0 0.005 will come. So, 0 0.005 into 10 to the power 17 hertz. Yes or no? You have to calculate. I am just approximating it. I think it is correct. Yeah. Mohammed Hisham. Yes, yes, correct answer. 5.09 into 10 power 14. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Clear now? Yeah, so one more question is there, speed of light, 
of refracted light. So speed in water, that's easy because you know the relation for refractive index. So this is the first one, second, third. What is the formula for refractive index? N is equal to C by V. That means speed V is equal to C by N, the refractive index. C is what? 3 into 10 to the power 8. Refractive index is given as 4 by 3. So we get 9 by 4 into 10 to the power 8. 9 by 4 is 2.25 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Yes, correct answer, Hisham. Right. Yes. Is it okay or not? This is a simple question. Simple question. You are just uh, asking what is the wavelength, what frequency and speed. Easy, just basic idea, basic information. You can see this is a 2017 question. 2017 question. It is asked for two marks and it is asked as a part of a three mark question also. That means it repeated. Like, it's not only one time this question came. Clear or not? Please come and can I go to the next question number 53? Yes or no? Yes. Question number 53 now. Look at this. How does the refractive index of a transparent medium depend on the wavelength of incident light used? That's already been discussed. How uh, uh, refractive index depends on wavelength that is inversely proportional. Refractive index N is inversely proportional to the wavelength lambda. Okay. Now, look at the second question, sub-question in it. There is... Smriti is asking... Uh, so, for this question, if we get values similar to the answer, we will still get marks, right? Like, if I round the answer or something, I will get marks. Smriti, it is not MCQs, like it is like 2 marks and 3 mark question. So, you have to, if your method, everything is correct, then small uh, difference in the final answer won't make big difference. Okay, you will get marks. That means rounding off and all, it's fine for you. Okay, yes. Okay. Now, listen. Uh, velocity of light in glass is 2 into 10 power 8 meter per second and in air it is 3 into 10 power 8. If the ray of light passes from glass to air, calculate the value of critical angle. Critical angle. So, it is a question from which topic? It's a question from total internal reflection, isn't it? Total internal reflection. So, here velocity is given and they are asking what is the value of critical angle. So, one is air and other is what? Glass. Air, if it is air, tell me the formula for uh, critical angle. We have 1 by sin c. 1 by sin c is equal to n of the denser medium with respect to rarer medium. This is our formula, nd by nr. But if rarer medium is air, you know that its refractive index is 1. That means nr value you can take 1. You get 1 by sin c is equal to what? nd. So, what is the denser medium in this case? It is glass. So, to find critical angle, we need the refractive index of glass. That you can easily find from the speed of light it is given. So, first let me find the refractive index of uh, glass. N of glass is equal to C by V. That means C is what? 3 into 10 to the power 8 by 2 into 10 to the power 8. So, we got it. It is 3 by 2. That is 1.5. Now, you can easily find Critical angle only they are asking, so we can write sin c is equal to 1 by sin c is nd, so 1 by n of glass. Okay, so 1 by what is it? 3 by 2, that means sin c is equal to 2 by 3. Sin c is equal to 2 by 3, c is equal to sin inverse of 2 by 3. Okay, this is the critical angle value. Very good, very good, very good. Hanna, Venkata, Karthik, Hisham, yes. Very good guys, keep going, like think, when a question is displayed on the, at that time itself your brain should start thinking, okay, what is the formula, how I can approach, alright, so can I go to the next, so before I am calculating on the board, I can see the answers are in this chat box, very good, keep going, keep this the same momentum till the end, I am going to the next question, question number 54, look at this, a ray of light falls on a transparent sphere of n is equal to root 3, at an angle of incidence 60 degree with the diameter AB of the sphere having the center C. The ray emerges from this sphere parallel to the line AB. Find the angle of emergence. It is a 2021 question. Okay, so check what is happening here. There is a transparent sphere. Its refractive index is given. And it is given that the ray emerges from the sphere parallel to the line AB. 
So emergent ray is parallel to the line AB means I can draw the emergent ray something like this C. It is going parallel. This is the emergent ray. That means inside that sphere how can you draw the ray from here till here. Is that okay? Yes. That is what the ray inside the sphere then what they are asking find the angle of emergence what is mean by angle of emergence angle of emergence is the angle between emergent ray and the normal so emergent ray is this one we have to find the angle of emergence for that we should draw the normal how can you draw the normal to that point normal for a sphere you know that it should start from where it should start from the center so look how i am going to draw the normal i can draw it like this so we have to find which angle, which angle we have to find. This is the angle of emergence. This is the angle of emergence. Understood? The question is clear now. Now let's check. Let's check. Here at this point, you can see that angle of incidence I is equal to 60 degree. Angle of refraction, we don't know. I am taking it as R. R. And inside this sphere, you can see that this is a triangle. This triangle, tell me students, is it an isosceles triangle or not? Tell me. This is the radius. This is also what? The radius. Is it an isosceles triangle? Yes. Which means if this angle is R, this angle will also be what? R. Now it is a very easy question because you can directly apply Snell's law. If you are applying Snell's law at the point A, what you can write? Sin I by sin R is equal to N2 by N1. So sin I, that means sin 60 by sin R, sin R equal to refractive index. It is given root 3. Actually, that is not required for this question. It is root 3. Clear or not? Yes. Now, to the point this, this point, to this point also if you are applying Snell's law, over there, the angle of incidence is R and angle of refraction is E. So, what we can write? Sin R by sin E. Sin R by sin E is equal to refractive index of air with respect to this. Air is 1. So, 1 by this one. 1 by root 3. What? Sin R by sin E is equal to 1 by root 3. That means sin E by sin R. Sin E by sin R will also be equal to what? Root 3. Now, we got two equations. Tell me the answer. This is equation 1, this is equation 2. You can just compare this sin 60 by sin r is equal to root 3, sin e by sin r is equal to root 3. So what is the relation? Comment your answers. Very good, yes. So we got, uh, no need to find r value. They are not asking r value, it is just to find angle of emergence. r, okay, you can find it easily. If they are asking r value, you can use this formula to find r. But if, here if you are comparing this, you can see that sin 60 is equal to sin e. That means e is equal to what? 60 degree. Is it okay? Yes. Easy question. Very simple question. Even that root 3 is not required here to solve this. But in some question you can see they may ask us to find the value of R as well. In that case you can uh, uh, use the value of root 3. Can I go to the next? Yes. Ashmita. Very good. Very good. Asim. Yeah. Kavi. Correct. Going to the next question. Number 55. A double convex lens is made of a glass of refractive index 1.55. With both faces of the same radius of curvature, find the radius of curvature required if the focal length is 20 centimeter. My dear students, question from lens makers formula. Lens makers formula, you know the importance of that formula or that topic. I hope all of you studied that derivation. Tell me the equation. Tell me the equation. 1 by f is equal to, what is it? N2 by N1 minus 1 into what 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 you know that this is the most important formula in this chapter that is the lens makers formula now let's check a double convex lens what is the meaning of a double convex both side are convex double convex lens is made up of glass of refractive index so material refractive index of the material of the glass is 1.55 and you know that that is taken as N2. What is N1? N1 is the refractive index of the medium in which the lens is placed. But did they say anything about that? No. That means you can consider it as air. That means N1 is equal to 1. N1 is 1. N2 is equal to 1.5. Now what about the radius? Both phases of same radius of curvature. That means if the radius of the first phase is R, radius of the second phase is also what? R. It is same. Yes, I can see the answers. Very good. Smriti, Saj. Very good, very good guys, keep going. So here, what you have to check? 
when you are applying the radius you have to you have to be careful about the sign convention my dear students if the surface is like this if the surface is like this the radius is positive if the surface is like this the radius is negative that means r1 is equal to plus r and r2 is equal to minus r now you can substitute that one here we get 1 by f is equal to n2 is 1.55 n1 is 1 minus 1 into 1 by r minus the other radius is negative so get minus 1 by r so 1 by f is equal to 0 0.55 into 2 by r what is the radius focal length is given as 20 we have to find the radius only right so you can substitute and solve what is the answer i can see many students commented like 22 centimeter very good that is the right answer the answer will be 22 centimeter solving it you get r is equal to 22 centimeter f is given as 20 clear or not clear or not now before going to the next question i can tell you if it is a concave double concave in questions you can see double convex double concave they can ask if it is a double concave lens be like this tell me what is the sign of r1 in this case for a concave double concave lens what is the sign of r1 you can see r1 will be negative okay and r2 will be what positive be careful they can ask plano convex plano concave like that if it is a plano convex you can see r1 is equal to infinity the radius of a flat surface is infinity and what about this one this one is the same shape so this one you have to take negative so sign convention has to be has to be very 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 important please take care of that okay can i go to the next question number 56 yes prism but it's not a prism question you just read it a ray PQ incident normally on the refracting phase BA is refracted in the prism BAZ made of material of refractive index 1.5. Complete the path of the ray through the prism. So it is just to draw the ray diagram and they are asking from which phase will the ray emerge and justify your answer. Is it a question based on the prism derivation refraction through a prism? No, right? They are asking us to draw the ray diagram see i can show you the prism you can see the prism is like so the other way right how they kept it yeah it is something like this yes so this is a given prism all right Okay, now what is the uh, incident ray path you can see it is incident ray is falling like this. Yes, this angle is given as 60. 60. What is the first question? Draw the ray diagram. So it's here at this phase you can see what is the angle of incidence? What is the angle of incidence for that phase? Angle of incidence is equal to you can see it is 0 because normally if you are doing it is falling perpendicular. The incident ray is falling normal to the face so no doubt if it is falling normally the ray will go without any deviation so you can keep your scale and draw the incident ray like this that part is clear i think understood now what will happen to this ray from the second phase so this is a this is b this is c so will it go out through the phase AC or will there be total internal reflection that is the question will there be total internal reflection will the ray undergo TIR you know the conditions for TIR what are the two conditions important question what are the two conditions the ray must travel from denser medium to rarer medium of course you can see the rays traveling from denser to rarer because glass is rarer and second one is what the angle of incidence it must be greater than the critical angle that's what you have to check in this kind of question whether the angle of incidence will be greater than critical angle or not. I can see the answers. I can see the comments. Very good. That means you got the answer before I am doing it on the board. That's very good. So how can you check? How can you check whether it will undergo TIR? For that first we have to find angle of incidence I. How? This angle is our angle of incidence, isn't it? Because this is the normal. This is the normal to the point of incidence. And this is the incident ray. Angle between incident ray and normal to the point of incidence is what? It is the angle of incidence. We need to calculate that value. This one, see this is 60 degree. So this will be 30. This is 90. And this will be 60. That means what is I? I is equal to... 
30 degree i is equal to 30 degree correct i is equal to 30 now what we need to check here what is the condition for tir condition for tir is i should be greater than c i is greater than c i greater than c means sin i should be greater than sin c simple sin i is greater than sin c now what is sin i sin i is equal to sin 30 sin 30 which is equal to what 1 by 2 1 by 2 means 0 0.5 this is sin i value now we can find sin c sin c the if it is see if sin i is greater than tir will take place so let's check what is sin c value sin c 1 by sin c is refractive index so sin c is 1 by refractive index what is refractive index 1.5 that means 3 by 2 so what is sin c value sin c is equal to 2 by 3 what is 2 by 3 2 by 3 0 0.66 we got the answer dear students tell me sin i is 0 0.5 sin c is 0 0.66 will it undergo tir or not yes or no will it undergo tir which is big sin i is only 0 0.5 sin c is 0 0.66 that means it's smaller it won't undergo tir it won't undergo tir that means what will happen the ray will emerge through this okay a denser to rarer so it will go away from the normal clear or not yes i can see the comments very good keep going it's clear for all of you i think there are many questions of the same type uh, i think you are familiar with there is another question with three different colors three different colors and the refractive index values are given and there was a question like which of the ray will undergo tir which will come out so the same logic only you need to apply for those questions you have to check whether sin i is greater than sin c or not then you can easily solve such questions i am going to the next question number 57 what is it again so this is a pure prism based question prism before starting this question it's a probable five mark question you know that derivation for uh, refractive index of the material of the prism please go through that because in between there are some more equation final equation of all of you remember refractive index of the material of the prism n is equal to sin a plus d by 2 by sin a by 2 let's check this question a ray of light is incident on a prism at an angle of 45 degree and passes symmetrically as shown in the figure calculate the angle of minimum deviation the refractive index of the material of the prism and angle of refraction at the point p angle of uh, refraction at the point p so that is actually a, a simple question all three we can easily calculate what is the first question angle of minimum deviation so before starting that let's write the given data a is equal to what 60 degree angle of incidence is given as 60 degree i angle of i mean angle of the prism is 60 degree i is equal to what 45 degree i is equal to 45 degree angle of minimum deviation do you remember the formula for angle of minimum deviation d is equal to we have a direct equation 2i minus a 2i minus a yes so this is the direct formula for calculating the minimum deviation those who have doubt go through the derivation of uh, refraction through a prism you can see this so d is equal to 2i 2 into 45 minus a is 60 what is the answer for the first question 30 degree simple 30 degree okay or not yes now what is the second question refractive index of the material of the prism refractive index of the material of the prism you can use direct formula for that n is equal to sine a plus d by 2 by sine a by 2 can you calculate and tell me the answer sine a plus d a is 60 60 plus d we got 30 so 90 90 by 2 by sine 60 by 2 is 30 so it is sine 45 by sine 30 so sine 45 you know that it is 1 by root 2 by sine 30 is 1 by 2 so 2 by root 2 which is equal to root 2 root 2 is the refractive index of the material good very good dia hanna cid musa karthik kavi venkata salman yes Ashmida, everybody got it keep going students you are going to rock in this exam i'm sure root 2 okay now what is the second c the angle of refraction at the point p now it's easy angle of refraction at the point p means this one okay how can we do that just directly apply snell's law sin i by sin r sin i by sin r is equal to n2 by n1 and so first medium is here so refractive index n is equal to sin i by sin r sin i by sin r okay so we can use sin r is equal to sin i by what is sin i 1 by root 2 by n is also what root 2. 
So we get 1 by 2 sin r is equal to r is equal to sin inverse 1 by 2 it will be 30 degree. Simple question r is equal to 30 degree. Okay. 30 degree. 3 marks actually for these 3 questions. 3 marks you can easily score. So one important thing is this formula I just keep with you. Minimum deviation not only the final equation. Yes. Correct. I am going to the next question number 58. 58. Okay. Uh, again a prism question, again a prism question, 2017, it is for two marks separately asked and as a part of a five mark question also this question came. A ray of light passing from air through an equilateral glass prism undergoes minimum deviation when the angle of incidence is 3 by 4 of the angle of the prism. When the uh, minimum deviation, when the angle of incidence is 3 by 4, so minimum deviation happens when i is equal to when i is equal to what 3 by 4 of the angle of the prism angle of the prism okay then calculate the speed of light in the uh, prism you know that to find speed of light we need refractive index then you can use n is equal to c by v uh, c by v formula so check how can we find refractive index here i equal to 3 by 4 a means i equal to 3 by 4 of it is given it's an equilateral prism so it will be how much a is 60 degree okay so we get uh, 15 45 i is equal to 45 degree we got it now yeah i is equal to 45 yes hridya a is equal to 60 now how can we find r you don't need to for to the uh, formula final formula like n is equal to sin a plus d by 2 that's not required here we can simply find because at minimum deviation position, we have one more result. What is the relation between A and R? A and R. So, you know that A is equal to R1 plus R2. Do you remember? And at minimum deviation position, we have a result that A is equal to 2R. A is equal to 2R. That means R is equal to A by 2, which is equal to 30 degree. Yes, yes, yes. Now we got i and r. Now we can easily find the refractive index. Do it. n is equal to sin i by sin r. Sin i by sin r. So sin i, sin 45, 1 by root. By what? 1 by 2. Again we get root 2 as a refractive index. Root 2 is a refractive index. Yes. Now are they asking refractive index? Be careful while writing the exam. Please make sure that you are answering to the final question. What they are asking in the question, make sure that you are answering to that particular question. Here they are asking, calculate the speed of light in the prism, not the refractive index. Okay, we got the refractive index. Now you can easily do it using the formula n is equal to what? C by v. So v is equal to c by n. That means 3 into 10 to the power 8 by root 2. Root 2 is 1.41. Uh, can you calculate and tell me? 3 by 1.41 into 10 to the power 8. What is the value? Yeah. Speed of light in the prism. Anybody, please tell me the answer. I can see it is 2 points. Smriti is saying that it is 2.1. Yeah, 2.1 into 10 to the power 8. Correct. Meter per second. 2 point something will come anyway because 1.41, no, 3 divided by. 1.4 would be approximately 2.1. Correct. Correct, dear students. Yes, I am going to the next question number 59. Optical instruments. Okay. So, we are going, uh, covering uh, important questions only. So, con you have to check. You are okay with all formulas, all concepts, ray diagrams, optical instruments. Without I am saying, you know the importance of that topic. Go through the ray diagrams, practice it, basic formulas, everything. So, let us check the first question. An optical instrument uses an objective lens of power 100 diopter and an eyepiece of power 40 diopter. The final image is formed at infinity when the tube length of the instrument uh, is kept at 20 centimeter. Identify the optical instrument. So first question is very simple. You have to identify. They did not say whether it is a uh, telescope, a microscope. We don't know. So let's check. Objective lens of power 100 diopter. Power is more for the objective, other one is 40 only. Power is more means focal length will be less. So you got an idea, it is which instrument? Can you tell me? Less focal length for the objective. What is it? Which device? Yeah, it is a microscope. Isn't it? It's a compound microscope. I can see good person, good person. It is not telescope. For telescope, objective should have what high focal length here. More power means focal length is less. Okay, so this is what? And 
compound microscope. Calculate the angular magnification produced by the instrument. Produced by the instrument. It is given, see, where is a final image form? Do you know that we have uh, two cases in all optical instrument. Final image is formed at near point and final image is formed at infinity. So in this question, it is given that the final image is formed at infinity when the tube length is 20 centimeter. Tube length, that means that capital letter L. Do you remember? In compound microscope, we have L. Okay, calculate the angular magnification produced by the instrument. So, we have direct formula now dear students. What is it? M is equal to tell me in terms of L. What is our equation? L by FO into what? D by FE. If the final image is formed at infinity, you can put negative sign also. Final answer because magnification is final result is negative. We will get inverted image. Okay. Now, the problem here is, did they give the value of F1 and FE? No. But power is given. Power is given. What is power? Power is 1 by F. So, here you can see minus of L into 1 by FO is there into D into what? 1 by FE is also there. Okay. So, we get minus L into 1 by FO is power, power of objective, I am just writing P of objective into D into power of eyepiece, power of eyepiece. Now you can substitute and do it. A CIDE Musa is asking how can we identify which formula we will have to use. Here in this question there is no doubt Musa because it is given that the final image is formed at infinity, it is mentioned. Okay, in uh, some question they won't mention like uh, so, uh, if they are mentioning it is normal adjustment, that also represents images at infinity. And if they are asking, uh, it is kept in such a way that maximum magnification is produced. So, maximum magnification getting means, again it should be at near point only. Because you know that uh, at normal adjustment or infinity it is d by f, at near point it is 1 plus d by f. Okay, so that is a way to understand it. Yes, now substitute, but before substituting, you know that L is given in centimeter, power is in diopter, that means that is an SI unit. So, you need to convert it, both should be in the same unit. So, what is L? L is 20 centimeter means 0 0.2 meter, okay, into 100 into D is 25, so 0 0.25 into what? 40. Tell me the answer, tell me the answer quickly. <coughs> so, we get uh, 25, 100 into 0 0.25 will become 25, 25 into 4, it is 100. Is it 200? Yeah, 200 is the answer. D, they won't give. Normally, uh, who is asking? Good person, yeah. Good person. I know you are a good person. Uh, D value, what is D? D is the near point. Near point, if they are not specifying, in some question you can see the near point is 20 centimeter. If they are not saying anything about near point, you can take it as 25 centimeter because 25 centimeter is the near point of a normal eye. Normal eye. So, the final answer will be minus 200. Yes, very good. Yeah. All of you got it, no? Yeah. Correct. So, please be careful while dealing with optical instruments numerical. Understand the situation clearly and then check which formula we can use. I am going to the next question, question number 60. You are given two converging lenses of focal length 1.25 centimeter and 5 centimeter to design a compound microscope. So, here it is given it is a compound microscope. It is desired to have a magnification of 30. Find out the separation between the objective and the eyepiece. Look at the question. So, we cannot directly use our magnification formula here. They are asking something else. What they are asking here? Find the separation between uh, the objective and eyepiece. Objective and eyepiece. So, here as you asked, how can you identify which case we have to choose here? Whether the normal adjustment, that means a final image is formed at infinity or the image at near point. Can you tell me? 
see to have a magnification we need to get a magnification of 30 so we can 30 is a maximum magnification so to get maximum magnification we can take the near point one okay near point uh Vengata, it is it's not a telescope f by f is a formula where that is in telescope this is microscope only be careful okay so you are given two converging lenses of focal length so let me write the data F4, focal length of objective is equal to 1.25 centimeter and focal length of eyepiece is equal to 5 centimeter. Okay, magnification, we should get magnification as 30. So, which formula we will use? M is equal to, M is equal to, what is the formula for magnification of a compound microscope when the image is formed at near point? We can write it as, L by F4. One formula, hope you remember, L by F4 into what? 1 plus D by Fe. Just do the calculation along with me. I need L. Y means what they are asking here. The distance between objective and what? Eyepiece. So, if you find L, you can easily find the distance. Okay. So, I need L. For that, let us substitute all other value. M is given as 30. L we don't know, L by, keep everything in centimeter, you'll get L also in centimeter. F4, what is F4? 1.25, 1 plus, what is D25 and I piece is focal length 5. So we get this one as 30 is equal to L by 1.25 into uh, 6. Okay, so L is equal to 30 into 1.25 divided by 6 so 5 into 1.25 is it the value of l 6.25 centimeter yes i can see l is equal to 6.25 centimeter this is l l okay now you have to be very careful we have to find the distance so if any confusion is there for these kind of question what you have to do is just draw a rough diagram for the situation rough diagram then you will understand what we are going to do listen this is our objective lens there is an object we are keeping here it will form an image you know that it will form it will form an image somewhere around here and this point is our fo you know that fo so this is nothing this distance is nothing but focal length of the objective lens and which distance is l from here to the image. This is actually what? L. That L we found. We got the value of L as what? 6.25. Yes. Then they are asking what is the distance between objective and eyepiece. Where is the eyepiece? Eyepiece is somewhere around here. That means to get that distance, we need this distance as well. This distance as well. Then you can easily add them. But the question is, how can we find that distance? If you are observing the diagram carefully, you can see that that distance is nothing but the object distance for the eyepiece because this one acts as an object for the eyepiece. That means this is equal to U for what? Eyepiece. So that also we have to find for this. Then only you can find the final answer. So how can you do that? You know Fe value. What is Fe value given? F is equal to 5 centimeter. And what is image distance for eyepiece? Where is the final image formed? Final image is formed at the near point. Near point means image distance will be equal to D. What is D? 25 centimeter. 25 centimeter, but it has to be negative because it's on the left side. Okay. Then you can easily find U, U of E using lens formula. Can you calculate and tell me the UE value? Yes, know the right answer, like uh, that, that is tw minus 25. Substitute, I am not going to show it here. Quickly tell me, calculate UE value using lens formula. What is lens formula? 1 by FE is equal to 1 by UE plus 1 by VE. Substitute and find UE. Anybody comment? Uh, BPS, the so is it fine if you do with infinite case? You can do like that uh, by infinity case, but it is desired to have a magnification means you have to think about the possibility of maximum magnification. Okay. Yeah. So what is the answer like? Uh, there are different answers. 
Saad Nawaz is asking 4.166. Uh, Hridya is asking, can you please explain how it is an ear point case? Hridya, they are asking, it is, we need to get a magnification of, we need to get more magnification, maximum magnification. That's the logic. If they are not specifying such thing, okay, it's magnification is 30 minutes, fine. Now, if in exam hall, if you get confused, like it is better, you have to mention clearly which case you are doing. Okay, and if it's a question with high weightage, either you can do the near point or you have to do both. If there is any confusion, if it is not uh, given clearly. Got it? Yes. So, 4.16 is U value. I can see the comments. 4.16 centimeter. So, guys, is it okay? Yeah. Right. Now, what is the final answer? What is the final answer? We need to add all these things, then only we will get the distance. So, the distance between objective and eyepiece will be FO plus L plus what? UE. No need to uh, consider the sign here because we just measuring the length only. So, you can add the magnitudes. So, FO we it is given 1.25, L we already got 6.25 and I can see you said the answer as 4.16. So, what is the final answer? Tell me. What is the final answer? <coughs> yes. Add them. So, 1.25 plus 6.25 will be 7.5 plus 4, 11.5, 11.66. Yes or no? Yeah. Venkata, no. Like, we need to add everything. 6.25 plus 1.25 plus 4. Point, okay, 11.66 will be the answer. Right. 11.66 centimeter will be the answer for this question. All right. Okay, then we correct answer. So, important question, lengthy question. Okay, don't make mistake. Yeah. Next, question number 61. A beam of light converges to a point, converges at a point P. Now, a convex lens is placed in the path of uh, the convergent beam at 15 centimeter from point P. At what point does a beam converge if the convex lens has a focal length of 10 centimeter? This is a tricky question. I will tell you why it is, there is a problem with this. A beam of light converges at a point P. So, we can just draw a beam of light. Look at this. This is one ray. There is another ray. One more ray is there. Just like you can see, a beam of light is converging to a point Okay, converges to a point P. And then after what we are doing, now a convex lens is placed in the path of a convergent P at a distance of 15 centimeter from the point P. So, you need to place a lens, a convex lens like this. Like this. Then what will, surely the path of the ray will change. Okay, so how to do this? Look at this. The rays are coming from here to the lens actually, but since it is converging here, what we can assume, you know that this rays, it is like it appears to come from here. That means this point will be behaving like a virtual object for the lens. Since these rays are coming from here, it is coming from here only, but we can think like that it is like going from this point. Got it? So, this point is our object. So, what is the object distance? Can you tell me? It is not a real object, dear students. It is actually a virtual object. Such an object is not there, but you can treat that as our object. So, tell me the object distance, all of you, u equal to how much? Because, you know, this distance is, it is given that this distance is 15 centimeter. So, what is the object distance value? 15 centimeter. I can see the answer, but tell me the sign of u. Is it positive or negative? Is it positive or negative? Yeah, U value will be uh, 15, but what is the sign? So, it is an interesting case, Vengata, no. In normal case, you can see U is negative because that is real object. But this is a virtual object and where is it? It is on the front side, it is on the right side. That means this is a case, it is one of the rare case where U value is what? positive. So, you, you have to take 15 centimeter. Yes. Now, it is easy because focal length is given as 10 centimeter. It is a convex lens. Dear student, calculate V and tell me. 
using lens formula what is v value q you can use 1 by f is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u so i can see 6 centimeter as the answer yes correct very good so 6 centimeter 6 centimeter means the image will be formed at a distance of 6 is positive or negative you can see it is plus 6 plus 6 so these rays will be converging so this total is 15 centimeter you can see that when you are placing a lens these rays will be converging at a distance of 6 centimeter it is better if you can draw a diagram also like this okay yes clear or not Mohammed sir is M always what is uh, uh, Mohammed Ibrahim do you mean U or M I didn't understand what is mean by in your doubt it is mentioned sir M always negative do you mean U <coughs> okay others I hope it is clear you can clear your question yeah so six uh, previous question what is it yes yes optical instrument you are asking right yes that is like you know inverted image only all optical instruments are forming inverted image so inverted image means magnification will be negative okay right can i go to the next question is it clear question number 62 62 look at this a biconvex lens made of a transparent material of refractive index 1.25 is immersed in water of refractive index 1.33 will the lens behave as a converging or a diverging lens just, it's just like an yes or no question you have to say whether it will be a converging lens or a diverging lens and you have to justify simple question tell me the answer convex lens so lens is convex so lens is convex lenses are basically converging lens you know that convex lenses are basically converging lens but here where we are placing it it is placed in a in water say so, okay water of refractive index 1.33 which means n1 value is 1.33 n2 that means refractive index of the material of the lens is 1.25 1.25 you know how can we understand whether it is a converging lens or a diverging lens it is just by checking it's the sign of its focal length so you can use lens makers formula 1 by f is equal to i can see the answer yes yes n2 by n1 minus 1 into what 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 since it is a convex lens this 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 part is a positive number so no need to worry about that that is always a positive number this is positive now you have to check the sign of this part if that part is positive it is a converging lens if that part is negative it will be a diverging lens so what is n2 n2 is 1.25 by what is n1 1.33 minus 1 so dear students you can see that this will be a number which is less than 1 1.25 by 1.33 means it is less than 1 minus 1 will be a negative number so what is the answer very good diverging lens and now Hudhya Venkata yes uh, Salman yeah right clear now uh, this is Mad Madhura Sri Brahmani I think you got it nature will be changing because you know the effective focal length you are getting it is negative okay right i'm going to the next question can i question number 63 63 look at this a compound again a optical instrument question a compound microscope has an objective lens of focal length 1.25 eyepiece of focal length 5 centimeter a small object is kept at 2.5 centimeter from the objective if the lens uh, the final image is formed at infinity find the distance between objective and the eyepiece so again they are asking us to find the distance between objective and eyepiece okay so how can we go ahead so here it is given that there is no confusion about which case we have to take it is given the final image is formed at where infinity the final image is formed at infinity uh, so you can write the data f o is equal to 1.25 centimeter i piece of focal length 5 centimeter object is kept at a distance of 2.5 from the objective if the final image is formed at infinity so look if this is the objective and this is the i piece you know that object is kept here the image will be formed at some distance we need the distance between these two okay so final image is at infinity means this should be at the focus of eyepiece so this distance is equal to the focal length of eyepiece it is equal to what 
F E. F E. That's clear now. That means to find the length of this microscope or uh, to find the distance between the objective and the eyepiece, what we need in addition to that, F E is given as 5 centimeter. If you can find this distance, our answer will be F E plus that distance. What is that distance? That distance is image distance of our objective. That means V or value. Understood or not? Uh, see, don't go with the basic direct formula for magnification. You just read the question and think in which way we can approach this. See, they are asking this one. Final image is formed at infinity means this should be at the focus of eyepiece. That means this is this length is equal to the uh, focal length of the eyepiece. Then to find the distance between this objective and eyepiece, what we need is this distance VO. So first step is you just find VO using lens formula. For that you can take what objective, take only objective lens only objective lens what is u value u is given the distance is where is it yeah a small object is kept at a distance of 2.5 but it is negative because we are going to keep it in front of it so minus 2.5 centimeter what is its focal length f4 so u o is minus 2.5 f4 is given 1.25 1.25 centimeter can you find vo students quickly i can see 7.5 centimeter 7.5 centimeter. I am not calculating. I hope it is correct. Is G. Can you mention your name? G. Saad Nawaz is getting 7.5. Yeah. 7.5. I think it's the right answer. Can I go ahead with that answer? Is the length is 7.5 or V is 7.5? I don't know. V value I need first. VO using lens formula. Sora. Yeah. V is 7.5. Correct. So, VO is equal to 7.5 centimeter. Very good. VO is 7.5 centimeter. Oh, is it VO or total? Uh, v is 2.5. My mistake. Okay. Very good. Very good. Very good. VO is equal to what? 2.5 centimeter. Right. So, what is that final answer now? F is already given 5. So, final answer is 7.5. Yes. You guys are doing a great job keep going so the length of the microscope that means the distance between objective and eyepiece is 2.5 plus 5 centimeter it is equal to 7.5 centimeter my dear students you don't worry about optical instruments if you are understanding it it's not a tough question okay it, it is not a tough topic you can score full mark from that okay yes uh, Smriti why such a confusion uh, actually this uh, 7.5 is not VO value Okay. Yeah, final answer is uh, such, such questions playing this formula is enough. Not much logic required, right? Uh, some questions you have to apply your logic also. The PS thug life. It's because you know, if you are studying only basic formula, you cannot do these kind of questions. You need to think what we have to find. Okay. Right. So I think this is the last question from uh, ray optics part. Now I'm going to wave optics. Wave optics, you know that uh, topics are comparatively less, indifference, diffraction, that's the main area. And the derivations are also less. Some basic idea and let me go through the questions of that. So, ray optics, but before starting uh, uh, wave optics, let's go through the direct questions, the derivations and all. Uh, this is <coughs> an object is placed in front of a concave mirror, mirror formula derivation, like mirror formula derivation. Normally, the students won't give much importance to reflection part. But you can see in 2020, this question came for 5 mark. Mirror formula derivation, 1 by f is equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v. So, please go through that. Okay. And one of the important topic, you know, refraction at a spherical surface. It's a 5 mark question, 2015. Refraction at a spherical surface. What is the formula for the refraction at a spherical surface? N2 by v minus N1 by u equal to N2 minus N1 by R. So, please study this thing. Draw a ray diagram to show the image formation by a combination of two thin convex lenses in contact. Combination of lenses. I did not discuss any question from that. It's easy topic. Combination of lenses. What is the, how can you find uh, effective focal length? 1 by f is equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 plus etc. And uh, power p is equal to p1 plus p2. So, please check that. Okay. Yeah. So, for the refraction through spherical surface, all the cases are important. All cases in the sense, uh, you are asking like concave and convex. You have to study both. 
but the method is same the result is same okay only the sign will change but if they are not mentioning you can take convex surface the easy one I mean the one that we are practicing in class next with the help of a red diagram show the compound microscope forms a magnified image of tiny object direct question with the help of red diagram explain the formation of image of a compound microscope so practice the red diagram practice the red diagram okay the diagrams and all should be neat and clear uh, image by reflecting telescope reflecting not refracting okay so read the question carefully reflecting to cast a grain that mirror thing that objective is a mirror so study that those schematic arrangement of reflecting telescopes they are asking what are the important advantage you know that what are the advantage of reflecting type telescope isn't it yes now wave optics wave optics Huygens principle and its application uh, coherent and incoherent indifference of light diffraction so indifference and diffraction are the most important area in this chapter mostly uh, indifference is the one there are a lot of topics are there and from Huygens principle you know there are direct question draw the wave front uh, different shapes of wave fronts and there is chance of asking the two derivations also for the loss of reflection and refraction based on wave theory okay so uh, got an idea wave optics you know the what are the important formulas and all and please don't forget to go through our uh, MCQ discussion also for all the chapters not only from these two okay next let's start question number one look at this in a Young's double set experiment so why DSC in the reference problem in a Young's double set experiment experimental setup the intensity of light waves from two coherent sources are in the ratio 9 is to 1 find the ratio of intensity of bright and dark fringes in the indifference pattern I hope you remember this is a direct question yes or no ratio of intensity of bright to dark means the ratio of maximum intensity to minimum intensity you guys know the formula what is it I max I max by I minimum is equal to there are two equation one is in terms of amplitude and other is in terms of intensity in terms of intensity what is the equation root I1 plus root I2 the whole square divided by root I1 minus root I2 the whole square now you can substitute and tell me the answer 9 is to 1 so 9 is to 1 means in I1 is 9 and I2 is 1 so root I1 will be 3 3 plus 1 by 3 minus 1 the whole square so 16 by 4 what is the answer can you comment can you comment yeah 4 is to 1 is there any doubt no right 4 is to 1. 4 is to 1 is the answer for the first question. Yes, CID Musa, Tanvi, Ashmita, Sora, everybody got the right answer. Question B. Monochromatic light of wavelength 600 nanometer is incident from air on water surface. If the refractive index of water is 4 by 3, then find the wavelength of the refracted light. It's already we discussed in ray optics also there was an identical question. So what is the formula for that? Question B, what we need to use? N1 lambda 1 is equal to N2 lambda 2. They are asking lambda 2 value. So lambda 2 will be equal to n1 lambda 1 by what? n2. We discussed the same type of question, right? So n1 is 1 into lambda 1 is 600 by what? 4 by 3. So 3 will go up. 3 into 600 by what? 4. The answer will be 450 nanometer. Very good. 450 nanometer. Easy question okay easy question this question came for three marks in 2021-22 okay easy so there is a question like for the first volume chapters chapter one for the charge distribution we have to uh, should we do the which charge distribution Venkata you are asking I didn't get charge charge distribution there is no derivation like you have to find line charge uh, sheet of charge and uh, that spherical shell electric field application of Gauss theorem only okay yes so 450 nanometer can I go to the next question yes question number 65 65 look at that a beam of light consisting of two wavelengths 600 nanometer and 500 nanometer is used in a Young's double slit experiment the slit separation is 1 millimeter and the screen kept 0 0.60 meter away from the plane of the slits calculate the distance of the second bright fringe from the central maximum for wavelength 500 nanometer 
the least distance from the central maxima where the bright fringes due to both the wavelength coincide. In interference, in, in interference, there are some important points which you have to remember. One is, of course, the intensity formula. What is the intensity formula? I equal to 4 I naught cos square phi by 2. There is a, Hisham was asking intensity derivation. Intensity derivation, they did not say that that derivation is deleted. But fringe width derivation, you know, need to study, beta derivation. But intensity derivation, you know that there are a lot of steps. So you have to study the final equation and the initial step. Just go through that. That 4 I naught cos square phi by 2 derivation. Okay. And then what are the other points to remember in YDSE, in Young's double set experiment? Conditions for bright and dark. What is the condition for bright? If path difference is n lambda, that point will be bright. If path difference is 2n minus 1 into lambda by 2, that point will be dark. These two conditions. Yes or no? Yeah. Then fringe width formula, beta is equal to lambda d by d. And one more important result is there. Uh, we can use that only here. So what first question you can see, the distance of the second bright fringe from the central maxima for wavelength 50 nanometer. So let me just show the arrangement of YDSE. This is S1, this is S2 and here is our screen. This is the center of the screen. Okay. Now in this question they are asking, uh, no diffraction uh, only the central maxima thing. Okay. Central maxima C and here, that's what the name I can see, C and here, my dear C and here, yeah. Okay, so you just go through the formula, the central maxima formula and condition for bright maxima and minima, that's the only thing you have to remember in that. Okay, and what is path difference formula, that's it. Listen, so here they are asking, what is the first question, the distance of the second bright fringe from the central maxima. So this is a central maxima, where is second bright fringe formed? So if you are taking this as any general point, we have an equation for this distance. We have an equation for that distance and what is that distance? X is equal to, do you remember? D by D into path difference. This is that formula. X is equal to D by D into path difference. Okay. So keep this formula in your mind. Actually, from where we are getting this formula means it is actually while deriving the fringe width only you will be getting that one. But fringe width derivation is not there this year's syllabus. That means let's hope they won't ask these kind of question. But we cannot take any risk. This question came in 2021-22, these type of questions. So just keep this formula in your mind. Okay. So now we can check what they are asking distance of the second bright so here bright for bright what is the condition path difference is n lambda so we can write it as d by d into n lambda if it is bright means i mean dark means you have to write 2n minus 1 into lambda by 2 second bright means n is equal to what 2 so for the first question what we can write x is equal to x is equal to d what is d given 0 0.6 meter what is small letter d given small letter d 1 millimeter convert into meter 1 into 10 power minus 3 n is 2 second bright and lambda is for that question it is 500 nanometer so 500 into 10 to the power minus 9 can you tell me the answer students can you tell me the answer for this question i can see 6 into 10 power minus 4 meter yes i'm writing the answer directly here 6 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter will be x value x value all of you got this? No. Yeah. So please keep this formula in your mind. X is equal to D by D into path difference. Okay. Now I am going to the second question. Second question is also based on the same concept. What they are asking second question, you can see the least distance from the central maximum where the bright fringes due to both the wavelength coincide. Both the wavelength means there are two wavelengths given. One is 600 and other one is what? 500. Coinciding. So coinciding means like this X value should be same for both then only it can coincide. But we don't know which fringe, which fringe of the first wavelength coincide with which fringe of the second wavelength. That we don't know. So for that, let us assume n one fringe of the first wavelength coincide with n2. We don't know the numbers. But we can write x formula. x is d by d into path difference. So I can write x1 is equal to x1 is equal to d by d into what is path difference formula n lambda but i don't know which n so i'm taking it as n1 and this one i'm taking as lambda 1 x2 
the distance for the second wavelength I can take d by d into what n2 into lambda 2 coinciding means these two has to be what equal that means x1 is equal to x2 if you are equating x1 is equal to x2 what you will get n1 lambda 1 d by d d by d will be cancelled n1 lambda 1 is equal to what n2 lambda 2 that means n1 by n2 is equal to lambda 2 by lambda 1 what is lambda 2 value lambda 2 it's uh, 500 by 600 that means we get n1 by n2 is equal to what n1 by n2 is equal to 5 by 6 what do you understand from this students if n1 by n2 is equal to 5 by 6 means the fifth bright of the first wavelength will be coinciding with what sixth bright of second that is the meaning of because we cannot simplify it further we cannot we can multiply by 2 that means we can make it 10 by 12 that means 10th bright of first will be coinciding with 12th that's also possible but they are asking the least distance so least distance means we have to think about the minimum possibility so we got n1 as 5 and n2 as what 6 so n1 is equal to 5 and n2 is equal to 6 and after that they are not asking the values of n1 and n2 what is the question what is the question question is the least distance least distance where it coincide that means either x1 or x2 it will be same because we just started from where x1 is equal to x2 so you can substitute this n1 value in this equation and substituting the data can you do the calculation i can see the answers from many students it is given that uh, 18 into 10 power minus 4 18 into 10 power minus 4 or minus 3 both the answers are there 0 0.018 means it is minus 3 so I think 18 into 10 raised to minus 3 is the answer. So please check the calculation. I don't have time to do all the calculations. So I'm just writing the answers here. I think it is 0 0.018. That means 18 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter. Others also can comment. If any doubt in this, please ask. Mohammed Sabi is asking, sir, we should take N as 5. You can take N as 5, N1 as 5. So you can substitute in this formula. If you're taking N1 as 5, you need to put lambda 1 only. If you're taking N as 6, then you have to substitute a lambda 2 value. Okay, then the answer will be same for both. Clear? Can I go to the next question? Please comment. Can I go to the next question or not? You need to finish the things quickly because you guys need time to study. Question number 66. Okay, the ratio of width of the slit in length double circus is 4 is 1. Evaluate the ratio of intensities at maxima and minima. So I max by I minimum again. But what is the difference between this one and previous question here? The ratio of the width of the slit. Width of what is the relation? There are three things you have to think always. One is intensity, amplitude and width. Intensity, amplitude and width. Width of the slit. So you know that intensity is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude. Okay, what is the relation between intensity and width? Intensity is directly proportional to width. So more the width means more the intensity. Now th that means uh, we need to find what I max by I minimum. So intensity and width are directly proportional means you can use the same formula for intensity. Even for width you can use the same concept root I1 plus root I2 divided by root I1 minus root i to the whole square okay so substitute what is it 4 is to 1 so square root of 4 is 2 2 plus 1 divided by 2 minus 1 the whole square so 25 by i mean 9 by so what is the answer 9 is to 1 clear or not intensity and uh, width are directly proportional if any doubt ask me please yeah, 9 is to 1. Very good. So, I am going to question number 67 now. 67. Okay. Yeah. 9 is to 1 is the answer for this. Look. <clears throat> a slit of width 0 0.6 millimeter is illuminated by a beam of light consisting of two wavelengths 600 nanometer and 480 nanometer. The diffraction pattern is observed on a screen 1 meter away from the slit. Find the distance of the second bright fringe from the central maxima 
pertaining to light of 600 nanometer. So it's a question from diffraction, you know that diffraction. I told you like what are the points which you need to remember from diffraction. In diffraction like let me show the single slit arrangement. Slit. So width of the slit we can take it as what? A. A. On the screen you can see what? The diffraction pattern. The center point is always bright. It is a bright spot and that is called central maxima and you know that at central maxima the path difference between the waves will be zero. Isn't it? Path difference will be zero, phase difference will also be zero. And the other possibilities are, if there is a path difference, it can be a maxima or minima. If that path difference is equal to n lambda, path difference is n lambda means that is minima. So the condition for minima is what? Path difference is equal to n lambda. What is the condition for maxima? It is path difference is equal to 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2. I told you in my class like uh, the condition for bright in interference is the condition for dark in diffraction. The condition for dark in interference is the condition for bright in diffraction. So please keep that idea in your mind. And let's try this question. Uh, the diffraction pattern is observed. So every data is given what they are asking the distance of the second bright fringe from the central maxima. So the central maxima is formed here. We need to find distance to the second bright. Dear students, they can ask this tends to third bright or first dark, they can uh, ask anything. So how we can get an idea for these type of questions? So not only for this particular question I am asking, generally how can you make an idea? Here bright no. So for bright what is the condition? I start with the condition for bright. For bright or for maxima, what is the condition? Condition is path difference is equal to, path difference is equal to 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2. This is the formula, isn't it? 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2. Similarly, if in a question they are asking dark means you can start from the same thing. Condition for dark is equal. Path difference is n lambda. In this question which is a second bright. Second bright means n is equal to 2. n is equal to 2. Now we need this distance. For that, in diffraction, we have a formula for path difference. Do you remember that in terms of angle of diffraction? Can anybody tell me what is path difference equation? Path difference in terms of A and angle of diffraction theta. What is it? Path difference is equal to? Path difference is equal to what? It is equal to A sin theta. Yes, very good. Karthik, Ashmida, right. A sin theta. So here we can write what? A sin theta is equal to 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2. I am explaining a general concept and after that we can come back to this question. 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2. Okay, now what we need? We need this distance, right? Take it as x. And you know that distance between slit and screen is given as d. And this is the angle of diffraction theta. So how can we do next? simple uh, trigonometric concept like in diffraction you know that or generally in the case of light the angle of diffraction is very small because wavelength is very small that means theta value is very small if theta is very small if theta is very small sin theta is equal to theta is equal to tan theta why we are taking tan theta here then it will be easy for us tan theta is equal to opposite side by what adjacent side x by d so here we can write a x by d is equal to what 2n plus 1 into what lambda by 2, then x is equal to what we can write 2n plus 1 into lambda d by 2a. This is the formula. No need to buy heart. No need to buy heart because you know the condition for bright and dark. You know the condition for minima and maxima. Then what we are doing, we are just equating the path difference. Path difference is a sin theta. Sin theta make tan theta. You will get, you can solve all questions of these type using this idea. Now n is given as 2. n is given as 2. So we get x is equal to 2 into 2, 4. 4 plus 1, 5. 5 lambda d by 2a. Anybody got the answer? I am sure there are students those who can do before I am completing here. Because you have the idea of this one. Can you just substitute the data and tell me the answer? Wavelength is 600, okay, because this question is specifically for 600 nanometer. Lambda is 600, capital D is how much? 1 meter. Yeah, 1 meter, D is 1 meter. So, we get 5 into, lambda is 600 into 10 to the power minus 9 into D is 1 meter by 2 into A. What is A? 
0.6 millimeter. 0.6 into 10 to the power minus 3. Yeah. Quick. Anybody got the answer? Uh, 5 by 2 will be 2.5. So 2.5 into this 600 can be written as 0 0.6 into 10 power minus 3 will come divided by, sorry, not minus 3. Uh, 3 will come here minus 6 divided by 0 0.6 into 10 to the power minus 3. Yes, 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 3. Anybody got? Yes, very good. The right answer, Karthik, Hisham. Very good, very good students. So, clear now how to do these kind of questions if they are asking? Just check which, what type of fringe, whether it is bright or dark. Okay, uh, write the condition for that path difference is equal to uh, n lambda or 2n plus 1 n lambda by 2. And then for path difference, write a sin theta, then sin theta change into what? Tan theta, x by d value. So, this is the method. Okay, so question number 68. Good. Sodium light consists of two wavelengths, 5900 Armstrong and 5960 Armstrong. If first F is slit of width 2 into 10 power minus 4 meter is eliminated by sodium light, find the separation between the first secondary maxima for the diffraction pattern on the two wavelengths on a screen placed at 1.5 meter away. This question, I am not going to do it because it is same idea only in the previous question. I will just tell you what is the meaning. There are two wavelengths. There are two wavelength. First one is 5900 Armstrong, other one is 5960 Armstrong. Okay. And uh, width of the slit is given. What they are asking, find the separation between first secondary minima. That means, I will tell you what is the meaning of this question. If this is the screen, this is central maxima, central maxima. And when you are using the first wavelength, which minima? First secondary minima. First secondary minima means, what is the condition for minima? Listen, minima is path difference is equal to what? Path difference is equal to n lambda. So, first secondary minima means n is equal to what? 1. So, I am writing a sin theta is equal to 1 lambda and sin theta is again it is tan theta x by d is equal to what? Lambda. That means x is equal to d lambda by a. This is x formula in this case. Sorry, secondary maxima. My mistake. If it is secondary minima, this is the method. Secondary maxima means, thank you, Salman, for correcting me. So, path differences, again, 2n plus 1 into what? Lambda by so, since it is first secondary maxima, n is equal to 1. So, we get 3 lambda by 2. Path difference is again a sin theta. So, I can write it as a x by d. So, what is x? x is equal to 3 lambda d by 2a. This is x formula for this particular question. x is equal to 3 lambda by 2a. Now, what they are asking? There are two different wavelength. One is 5900 and other is what? 5960. So, if you can find x1 for the first one it will be 3 lambda 1 d by 2a then for the second one x2 we get 3 lambda 2 d by 2a the only difference is in wavelength got it so we get two different positions so let it be x1 and let this be x2 they are asking what is the separation so x2 minus x1 can you do the calculation by yourself you got the idea or not it is based on the same concept of previous question. They are asking the separation. Separation, uh, find the separation between the first secondary maxima of the diffraction pattern of the two wavelengths. Can you do it? Can I go to the next question? Yes or no, please come in dear students. I hope it is fine for you. Just substitute lambda 1, lambda 2 value and substitute it. Okay. I am going to the next with your permission. Yes. Uh, sir, so we find both. I didn't get uh, your. Uh, that sentence is not clear. Thug life. Yeah, you have to subtract. That's it. They are asking separation means, for example, simple example like if x2 is 5 centimeter and uh, x1 is 3 centimeter, what is the separation? That 5 minus 3. So you can subtract and find. Clear? Okay, next. Question number 69. 
A parallel beam of light of wavelength 500 nanometer falls on a narrow slit and the resulting diffraction pattern is obtained on a screen 1 meter away. If the first minimum is formed at a distance of 2.5 millimeter from the center of the screen, find the width of the slit and then distance of the first secondary maxima from the center of. So this question already we discussed, I mean this type, distance of the first secondary maxima that we can do. Now look at the other question. If the first minima is formed at a distance of 2.5 millimeter, that means if this is the center of the screen, first minima, first minima is formed at a distance of how much? 2.5 millimeter, millimeter, 2.5 millimeter. Then what they are asking? Uh, width of the slit. See, first minima is formed here means at the same distance you can see other side also there will be a first minima. In between first, these two minimas you can see what? Central maxima. Central maxima. So tell me students, if first minima is formed at a distance of 2.5 millimeter, what is the width of the central maxima? It will be double of that. So we can see from this width of central maxima will be width of central maxima width of central maxima will be equal to how much 5 millimeter isn't it it will be 5 millimeter okay now you can directly substitute the formula for the width of central maxima what is it so 5 millimeter is equal to that means 5 into 10 power minus 3 is equal to 2 lambda d by a this is the formula you know that width of central maxima is 2 lambda d by a yes then uh, what they are asking only a only we have to find width of the slit. So A is equal to what we get A is equal to 2 into lambda. Lambda is 500 nanometer, 500 into 10 power minus 3. Capital D is 1 meter divided by 5 into 10 to the power. Sorry, this is minus 9 nanometer, no? Minus 9. So 5 into 10 power minus 3. You can calculate the answer. Yeah. Why there are some different answers like Kashmita uh, 6 point, what is that? Yeah, 2 into 10 power minus 4, right, correct. 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 will be the width of the slit. And the second question I am not discussing here because it is the same question we discussed in the previous question. Distance of first secondary maximum. First secondary maximum means n is equal to, so that x formula you have to use for that. Okay, x formula we have to use. Now I am going to the next question. Question number 70. Monochromatic light of wavelength 500 nanometer is incident normally on a single slit of width 0.2 millimeter produce a diffraction pattern. Find the angular width of central maxima. Angular width of central maxima. What is the difference between angular width and linear width? See if this is the width of the central maxima then this angle, this angle is called what? angular width and we have a direct formula for that. What is it? Angular width is equal to 2 lambda by A. 2 lambda by A. Uh, Ash is asking sir what if we use lambda D by A? Lambda D by A, yes, you can use it instead of 2 lambda D by A if you are using 5 you can use that one. It's correct only. Yeah. Yes, so 2 lambda by A. So substitute 2 in 2 lambda is 500 nanometer. So 500 into 10 to the power minus 9 by what is A? 0 0.2 millimeter. 0 0.2 into 10 to the power minus 3. Minus 3. Okay, so 2, 2 will be cancelled. Minus 4 will go up. We get 500 into 10 to the power minus 5. So 5 into 10 power minus 3, isn't it? 5 into 10 power minus 3. meter. Yes. Clear now? Okay or not? Please comment. Yes. Okay. By that, the question discussion of that chapter is over. So, you know what are the important area that which is to be covered from wave optics chapter once again, Huygens principle, uh, loss of reflection and refraction by Huygens principle, basic idea from interference, uh, con Condition for getting sustained interference pattern, relation between path difference and phase difference, what are coherent sources, its significances, okay, Young's double slit experiment completing, 
intensity distribution curve that is bo for both uh, interference and diffraction and all formulas and don't make silly calculation mistake especially that power thing minus 9 uh, conversion millimeter micro everything will come so my dear students please be careful now what are the direct question define the term wavefront state hygiene's principle that wavefront derivation okay uh, proof of law of reflection and diffraction and you need to practice all the probable wavefront diagrams also define a wavefront it is same case only okay using hygiene's principle interference of light uh, intensity derivation just go through it single slit that is just like you know uh, the condition for what is the condition for getting minima maxima that thing okay condition for minima and maxima is everything clear no yes and yeah now that's all about from optics part optics part is over so optics you know that optics are the uh, these two are the chapters with maximum weightage so please read the questions carefully without making any mistake no need to worry don't be tense especially the and optical instrument questions and all comes you need to be careful so by this uh, now we are going to start our modern physics part dual nature atoms nuclei comparatively easy chapter yes or no yeah so I'm taking a short break and Sunisar is here. So we'll be handling the modern physics part. Okay, so I'll come back soon. Okay, and sir, I think there is some surprise for them. Yeah, yeah, just stay, sir. Uh, yeah, I'll be here. Hi, all. Uh, hope you enjoyed the session. It was a little longer session, right? Uh, both optics, as we know, it's a lot. And that was the focus of today's discussion, mostly. Uh, that those two chapters we have to be very serious about. And uh, now we'll take a. There's a game. <laughs> Let's have a fun for some yeah, time. For some time, we we just revise uh, like uh, what we have done in these two chapters. First, let me buy the time. Uh, let me just log in. Sir. So there is a. We are going to have a small game now. Okay. It's a fun game. Be ready. Okay. Follow the instruction. All are ready, no? As you can see in the comment, uh, there is uh, a code, yeah. yeah. The code you have to enter in Minty. So we'll. What is it? This new one. Yes, we have to log in first. New presentation. By the time I'll be just flowing in, okay? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So be online before starting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is sign out already. Okay. So how's your preparations going? Uh, I'm waiting for your comments. Everything is fine, no? Confident about physics? Sar is doing something. I don't know actually. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's will be coming. Yeah. Yes. Last minute preparation, we will tell you, okay, that at the end of the session, we will tell you what are the things you have to take care when you are going for the exam in the exam hall. Okay, that and all, everything we will uh, discuss. What happened? It's coming come, up. It's coming up. Okay. I uh, hope uh, you can see that message. Um, Tushar is saying, brain is empty. Why Tushar? <laughs> Be positive, man. So we got like, you know, four or five days to study this subject. Actually, you people are very lucky. Like, you know, sir, we were getting only one day, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, sir, I will tell you what. already have uh, yeah, 24 players ready. But so I want all of you. What is the code, sir? Join. Uh, code is given in the comment. And I can give you... Yeah, there is a code given. It is 
40 sir what they need to do they need to log into yeah they know sir they just go to the menti.co and just use the code you can see on the screen on the top 74070995 just enter the code Yeah, let's have a game. Mendy dot com. Mendy dot com. Go to. There you can see in the chat chat box that code is there seven four zero seven zero. And on the top of the screen, you can see this yeah. is the code seven four zero. Just go there and there will be a join button. Just above that, you have to put a code. Or already thirty seven players, thirty six. Yeah. yeah, right. Seven four zero seven zero double nine five. Others also yes. Come on, fast, fast, fast. Mendy dot com. Yes. Yeah, Hanna is excited. I think. Is it Hanna? Let's see. Thirty-eight. Yeah. <coughs> Come on, thirty-nine, forty. Make it fast. I think six more uh, players can enter. There's a limit of fifty, fifty-eight or fifty-six something. Sorry, forty-eight or forty-six. So let's see how much we can go. Forty-one, forty-two. Yes, forty-three. Come on, come on, fast. Those who try fast can enter. So forty-six, only forty-six yes, players can it's play. It's up to fifty, I think. So uh, we already have one or two joined already. Okay, so okay. forty-three from us. Now keep trying. This is the code seven four zero seven. Go minty dot co. Use the code seven four zero seven zero double nine five. Forty-four players are ready. Forty-five. Yes. Forty-six. Come on. Is that the maximum capacity? Ah. Uh, Forty-seven. Yes, someone is trying. No, no. So I think more students can join. Yes, yeah, forty-seven. You can, can all join, I think. Yeah, because the limit is closed already. Forty-seven. Come on, come on. Go to menti.com. In your device. Join. Okay. Yes. Whatever just device you are using, mobile or uh, your desktop or laptop, anything like. Just go to menti.com and. Yes. Yeah. Forty-eight. 48. Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's let's go through some questions. Just take this. Come on. Let's see who wins. <coughs> and interesting prices, so Jibi sir. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we have to keep after, it ready. After the exam, after meet, the research. Yes, yes. When we meet, we have to conduct a function or something. Forty-eight. Come on, come on. Forty-nine. Forty-nine. Once again, let me tell you. Anna is you asking, just, what is the price? Yes. Okay. So I Fine. think I think that's uh, maximum capacity is like that. So shall we start? I think so, sir. Yeah. So quickly answer. What is the time they are getting? Thirty seconds only for one answer. Ah, uh, sixty seconds. I think that will be displayed on the screen. Yeah. See the questions mostly conceptual questions only. There is no much calculations. If there is a calculation, it will be very small. Like within two three seconds, you can, ah, uh, like uh, answer that. So don't take much time. Go through the question. Select option. Okay. Go to the next. Fine. And there will Ready? be ten questions. Ten questions ten will questions, be coming. Sorry. Yeah. Will be ah uh, ah uh, changing questions one by one. By the time you will get the options on your screen in the mobile. I hope you know this, right? So we will be showing the questions here. Question you can see in the screen. Atul is saying I can't join. I think so. The maximum capacity is yes, over. Yes, I'll give you another chance soon, Atul. Atul, 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 Atul yes. we'll, you'll get one more. One more. Fine. Yes. Yeah, okay. Then, then uh, after modern option. physics, I... yeah, maybe we have to go okay. for one more. Uh, let's see. Okay. <coughs> yes. So see the instructions on the screen, and this is the first question. The critical angle for total linear angle friction for a medium of 30 degrees. Yeah. 30 Where, seconds to answer your questions. You have given options on the screen. Come on, come on, fast. Eleven answers so far. Twelve. Mm. Come on. Seventeen seconds. Sixteen seconds. Fifteen seconds. Fourteen seconds. Come on, fast, fast. That options and uh, submit button will be disappeared after nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, one. Ten. Yes. Eighteen students got the right answer. Yes, out of forty-eight is option, right? Mm, but I think only thirty-six students can. Uh, okay, yeah, thirty-five so students can. Yes, yeah, could, yeah. could enter the correct answer, and uh, correct answer is one point five minute unraised weight only. So I'm sure it is not because of you don't know the concept. Actually, you needed more time. Yes, that's so the only it, problem for this question, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. See, uh, that is like uh, critical angle is given, right? Sine IC. Sine IC color, color. is. Uh, I'll change the color. Yeah. Yes. So it was. Sine IC is equal to one by n. That is a key concept, yes. critical angle, right? And IC is given as thirty. So sine IC is going to be one by two. One by two is one by n. Refractive index is equal to two. Two. Correct. Refractive index is two. 
See, if refractive index is 2, it is C by V. If you are asked to find what is the speed, velocity, V is going to be C by 2. What is C? C is speed of light. Power so 8. 8. Raised to 8 divided by 2. Yes. <coughs> Sorry. Correct. It's going to be 1.5. Okay. okay. Yes. We will move on to the next question. Keep be playing. ready. So you hope you got the idea, right? So what is to be done? And uh, let's see. Second question number two. Okay. All of you ready? Yes. Okay. Fine. Next one. Forty-nine players are waiting. Yes. Yeah. Next question is coming up. Which of the following is used in optical fibers? Which of the following is used in optical fibers? Your options are there. Oh, how quickly they are answering now. Yes, yes, 38, 39, 40, 41, yes. 44, come on, come on, come on. We have still, still time is there, seconds. time is there, yes. Yes, don't commit mistakes. Select the correct option. Okay, don't be in a hurry. Use your time. 46, 47, 48, yes. very good. Oh, I think all of them, all yeah, of them. Yes. Yeah. So let's see that the result is supposed to be amazing. Yes, we are waiting for that. One and zero. Ah, very <laughs> good. Yes, all, all of you know, know this. Answer, There's no right? mistakes. Like, there yeah, should not be a mistake for this question, yes, of course. Sure, sure. Yes. <laughs> okay. Total internal reflection, right? Nothing more to explain. And it totally should be like the exactly. same attitude should be there in exam hall as well. Yeah, and also not only for these questions, for the coming yeah, questions. Yeah, all the questions. Well. We don't want any options here. All of them should be like this, right? Hundred percent each. Correct answer. Okay, fine. Let's see. Next. Uh, moving on to the next. Nothing to explain here. In yeah, yeah. So let us move on to the next question straight. Question number three. Now there are 52 yeah. players. Oh, yeah. I they think the lim 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 limit has crossed. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's good. Go to the next Focal question. Focal length of a lens of power 100 diopter. Yes. Focal length of a lens of power uh, 100 yeah. diopter. Focal Cuply. power 100 diopter. Come on. Options. Don't be confused. 100 diopter is the given option. I mean, uh, is the power given? Your options 10 centimeter, 1 centimeter, 1 meter, and 10 meters. Students, Nine be careful. Seconds. Be careful. Okay. Nine, eight, 7 seconds, 6, 5, 4. You select your option now. 2, 1, and 0. Oh. Yes. 21, 29 students. 29 students got the correct answer. So Others, 20. hope you understand your mistake. Okay, see yes. that uh, uh, 1 by 100 is going to be 0 0.01 meters, right? Yes. Diopter so, is SI unit, it is meter inverse. So, you'll get if you're taking 1 by 100, it will be in meters. meters. You 1 by 100 value is in meters. meters. Okay, focal length in meters, 0 0.01. <coughs> <coughs> sorry, 0 0.01 meters. So, it was one Let's move on to the next. Yes. Yeah. Moving on to the next question. Get ready. Is coming up. Question 4 out of 10 is on the screen. In Young's double slit experiment, the fringe width is minimum 4 dash color. You are given colors violet, green, yellow and red. Fringe width is minimum. Yes, minimum. Fringe width is minimum for which color? Yes, come on. Out of these four, if you use which color, you will get minimum Violet, width. green, yellow and red. Why still there are students who answer for that? There is, okay. Everybody is answering. Yeah, for the good. six. Very good response. Seven seconds. Six. Five. Come on. That's it. Let's yeah. see. Oh, right. 16 See, students go. Yes, so that is obvious. Like, you know, we are going for the two extreme ends. Like, yeah, in either violet. And nobody, anyway, nobody marked the green. <laughs> yeah, no answer on that. Yeah, part, okay. Anyway. So, either violet or. Minimum, that. okay, it is not maximum. You know that fringe width is directly proportional to lambda. Yes. So, for which color lambda is minimum? Wavelength is minimum for violet. Yeah, so beta, that is beta it. equation was beta is equal to lambda d by d. small d, right? Lambda capital D by small d. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, beta will be minimum for minimum wavelength. Wavelength is minimum out of these colors. Minimum wavelength color is violet. Is the extreme end of the visible spectrum. You know, maximum for red. So the question was for which color beta will be less. Okay, minimum. So yes. answer is red. Yeah. Hope okay. you understood those who committed mistake. Next. Now moving on to the next question. Question number five out of ten is coming up.
What is the geometric shape of the wavefront that originates when a plane wave passes through a convex lens? Options given, converging spherical, diverging spherical, plane, none of this. Question based on shape of wavefronts. Yes, a plane wave, a plane wavefront passing through a convex lens. A convex lens, what will be the emerging wavefront, shape, shape. of the emerging wavefront? That's a question. Five seconds, six seconds, five yes. seconds. Four Time is up almost, three. Two, one, and that's it, zero. Yeah, uh, I mean, most of the students yes, got the right answer. Very good, very good. Correct. Others, those who made the mistake, please think, please check your book, you can see it. Okay, see, this is <coughs> Sorry. Uh, convex lens, and we are going to send a plane wavefront through it. The Once the wavefront comes out, it will be converging wavefronts, right? Converging wavefronts. Yes, that was the question. Good. Anyway, uh, 9 plus 4 is going to be 13. Wrong answers. Mostly, yeah. mostly Most correct. Of the students yes. good. Okay, good. Let's move on to the next. Question number 6 out of 10. Yes. An astronomical refractive telescope has an objective lens of focal length 20 and an eyepiece of focal then, then, yeah, magnification. Make it fast. You check all the options. Time is running fast. 20 centimeter and 20 meter and 20 centimeter are the focal length F O and F E given. <coughs> Let's see. We are waiting for this. <laughs> <coughs> yes. yes anyway, All of finally, this. Finally, yes, yeah. The more number is more correct answers sure, sure. That's All the three, that's four options, three options were correct, right? Yes. So those who checked, I think, those who checked, they didn't check the other options. Yes. Maybe yeah. they got magnification thousand. Your answers are correct. All options. Yeah. Whatever you marked is correct only. Yes. But so other options are also correct. Mostly, mostly they check uh, the magnifying power. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So they directly get thousand. Thousand. thousand so is they, they clicked they submitted. Did. That's it. And so check. So the please options. make sure that you are not going to make make this case, same mistake in exam hall also. <coughs> yes. There are also these kind yes. of questions. Yeah. Maybe especially there. especially when these kind of options are there B and C, C yeah. and D, or all of these. That kind of that kind of options is dangerous. Like there may be more possibilities. So don't con like just confirm with one option when you have that kind of options in this list. Okay, right, fine. So uh, as you know, it is twenty meter by twenty two centimeter is going to be thousand. That that this is correct. Length of the telescope we know length of the telescope is going to be f four plus f e. So twenty meter plus zero point zero zero point two zero point zero two meters meter, yeah. is going to be twenty point zero two meter. That's also <coughs> correct. And image is yeah, always like inverted. inverted. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All options were correct. <coughs> All of this is the correct answer. Let's move on to the next question. Seven out of ten is ready. Come on. Yes. For total linear reflection, which of the following is correct? One of the repeating question, right? Total internal reflection conditions. Light travels from rarer to denser medium. Light travels from denser to rarer medium. Light travels in air only, sir. And light travels in water only. We have 15 more seconds to go. Come on. Select the correct option. Yes, most of them are already marked there. There is a desire there answered. Mm. 54 places. Yes. 3, 2, 1, 0. Right. I am worrying about the six. <laughs> Those yes. who made mistakes. Yes, this is what I am looking for. These six wrong answers. Light mm. travels from right to denser. I think that may be some like an in a hurry, but we'll select wrong options. Okay. So read properly. Denser. Should to not error. happen in exam hall. Read it carefully. Take yes. your time before answering. And Always count. denser to rarer. Another condition is incident angle should be greater more than, than critical angle. Critical angle. Okay. These are the two conditions. Here it was just about the direction of. Like you know, the, the transfer of light from one medium to another only mentioned. So it should be denser to rarer. Okay, fine. Then <coughs> next question. Question eight. Few more questions. Those who are getting more points, like you know, answer fast to get more points. This is A not only the number of correct answers. How fast you score is also important. Equal to the refractor. Then focal length will be. Nice question. Convex lens is dependent liquid. Whose hmm. refractive index is equal to the refractive index of the lens? Then focal length will be. Be careful. Be careful. Yes. Don't be. Don't commit any mistake. Become zero. Become infinite. Become small. Tricky but not question. zero. Tricky question. Tricky yes. question. So remain unchanged. So decide. You have nine more seconds. 
46, 47, 48, 51. Yes. I am expecting one <laughs> wrong answer in this one. Mostly we commit one mistake. Yes. It's Ah, this is actually shocking. Yes. <laughs> remain that unchanged. That should not be. That should not be. See, why remain unchanged? <coughs> Refractive index of uh, lens. I mean, focal length of the lens depends on the refractive index of the surrounding medium. Lens makers formula 1 by F is equal to N2 by N1 minus, minus one. 1 into 1 by R1 minus 1 by R2. In this one, N1 is a surrounding medium. If you change the medium, there will be a change in the focal length, right? We know that. So, remain unchanged and that is even count 15. 15 students, yeah. Not good. Okay. Uh, <coughs> become zero. I expected the other way around, sir. Actually. Yeah, I, actually, this, I also expect yeah. more this students will be, will be more than zero. But, but nobody committed that mistake and this was dangerous. Yeah. Yes. N2 by N1. N2 and N1 are equal. Same refractive index means N2 is equal to N1. So, this term will become zero. <laughs> zero. So, 1 by F is equal to zero. So, F is 1 by 0, that is infinity. Yes. So, okay. focal length is going to be infinite. Right. Okay. Okay. So, let's move on to the next question. Yes. King Pepper Bull is saying that I made the mistake. Yeah. Okay, King, be, be careful. careful. Be now, be this careful. is fine. Yes. Now, it's fine. Learning from the mistakes. mistakes. Okay, next yeah. question is ready. Next question is ready. The objective of an astronomical telescope has a larger aperture, aperture too. too. We know objective lens of telescope is bigger, larger aperture. What is the reason? Quickly answering. Yes. So let's hope. Yes. <laughs> Correct only. That, that is dangerous saying. The, <laughs> the last question also, the same yeah, thing the happened. Same thing happened. Everybody, everybody decided soon. Yeah. <coughs> Eight seconds more. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Yes. Oh. At anyway. high <laughs> resolution. Yes. So, majority is this only still. We have a hope here, right, sir? Yes. yes. Hope. yes. High resolution. Yes. The uh, high aperture is for, I mean, large aperture is for high resolution. Because Most it remember? can uh, gather more light. So, more intense light will yes. be reaching. Okay. So, that high is High resolved idea. image will be obtained of distant objects. Fine. Correct? Yes. Be careful. Okay? But actually, like, uh, they did not the study the, yes. the solving power and all. Maybe. Yeah. Yes. One. Yeah. That, that's one reason. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> but, but those who committed mistakes, remember, uh, size of the aperture is more to keep higher resolution. We know magnifying power is uh, can be increased by changing the focal length. Focal right? so length that's yes, why we are length. keeping high, fo large focal length for an objective. But size aperture is bigger to get more resolution. Okay. Be careful. We have just one more question. I think right. This was ninth yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yes. So after this, we will announce who is yeah, the winner. It will right? be coming automatically. I think. Okay. Yes. Questions ten out of ten. Come on. Come on, come on. Which of the following forms of a virtual which of the following forms a virtual and direct image for all positions of the object? Yes. Optical instruments once again, lens mirrors. Always concave forming lens, concave virtual. mirror, convex mirror, both A and C. <coughs> concave lens, concave mirror, convex mirror, both A and C. Be careful. Select the device which always forms virtual image for all positions of the object. Wherever you keep the object, doesn't matter. It always produce virtual image. 54, yes. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, those, so, so actually, these two are correct only. Mm -hmm. like, yes, yes. So, the mistake, so the that same. That's what I told you. The, these kind of options are really dangerous. In the previous question, also yes, we yes, 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 same situation. Yes, for all, all of this. So, these kind of both. So, those who marked uh, this one and this one, that means option A and option C, that is correct only. But yeah. the problem is there was another option given, both yeah. A and <laughs> Which C. is more appropriate. So, that was a correct option, correct answer. Okay. So, be yes. careful when we mark your options. Right. So, uh, this is, that's it, the end of it. Now, I think we will go to the next. Automatically, that uh, uh, lead report will, will be coming come. up. Let's see. Okay, ready? Everyone, Let's please check see. Who's the winner. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Said, Chris. Who is the topper? Mm, coming up. This is, is finally it will be stable. Said, Said. Said. Very good. Congratulations. Said. Said. Said, yes. Okay. Said, can you comment? Can you comment something? So we have a gift here, sir. When, when, whenever you, we meet, Said, I think we can give it to him. Yes. Are you okay. there, Saeed? Yes, sir. There will be a small lag. He will be coming up. <coughs> Saeed, congratulations, man. Come on. Keep it up. Very good. And just below that, we have... Uh,
Chris, I mean, who? <laughs> Father is saying I am using my friend's account. <laughs> okay, so in a few. So, I mean, this is far. Yes. Someone Fahad, else is somebody else was paying. <laughs> yes, okay, Chris. Then the, there's orders here. Chris Mad- Madhura. Madhura. XYZ. Yes, <coughs> the B. Okay, anyway. Fahad. Yeah, so those, uh, at least those who are confident to score good, use your real names, okay? Don't play from your friend's account anyway. Okay. Anymore. Fine. Anyway, congratulations. Okay, Sai, that's very good. Uh, that was it. Now okay. we have to go back to our discussions, right? Yeah, so can I take a small break, sir? Yeah, okay, sir. We continue with some questions. Okay, guys, now our uh, ray optics and wave optics be completed. And this was just a revision of that concept also quickly. Just say we'll be a little bit relaxed also. So I hope you enjoyed. And we get one more chance. We get one more chance, like uh, maybe like after this modern physics session, we'll, we'll, we'll go for one more game. <laughs> Let's see. I'm setting it up. Okay. Right. Then. Yes, so this is where we stop, right? Back to discussion. Let's move on to the next. That is dual nature of matter and radiation. <coughs> Abhinav Jain, yes, I was oof master. Okay, <laughs> fine. That's what I told you. If you're confident to score good, reuse your real names. Venkita, uh, Venkita Subhradi says I am VS, VSRM. VSRM was in the third place, I think, right? Yes, anyway, very good. Congratulations, all of you. Fine, anyway, let's uh, try again later. Right now, we'll go through dual nature of matter and radiation. So, uh, whenever we come to modern physics, it will be a little relaxed because uh, after wave optics <coughs> and ray optics, after a series, I mean, like series of serious questions, we'll get some questions to be relaxed. Okay, so let's see what are the things we have to go through. Uh, if you go through the past paper analysis, topics 3, 4 and 5, as you can see, 3, 4, uh, even 5 and 6. Let's go through that. 3 is experimental study of photoelectric effect. Obvious, because uh, uh, photoelectric effect is the most important concept in that particular chapter, dual nature of matter and radiation. Yes, so that experimental study, then uh, factors affecting photoelectric effect, right? Intensity of radiation, frequency of radiation, applied potential. So that kind of, you know, uh, uh, factors affecting photoelectric effect is that topic is coming up here. That is uh, topic number three. And uh, one of the most, you know, more, all, all types of questions are repeatedly coming from that part. The other one is Einstein's photoelectric equation. Most of our numerical questions and uh, conceptual question also coming from that particular topic, Einstein's photoelectric equation. Uh, Einstein explained photoelectric uh, effect, right? <coughs> and there is a mathematical form of that particular equation. Fine. I mean, that particular uh, like explanation that was called Einstein's photoelectric equation. Then topic six is wave nature of matter. Yes, de Broglie hypothesis. We get one question from de Broglie hypothesis in almost all the question papers. See, this part is also important. So mostly factors affecting photoelectric emission or experimental study of photoelectric emission and uh, Einstein's equation, de Broglie wavelength. These three concepts actually covers almost all the questions from this chapter in the previous years. So be careful about these three topics and we will try some questions now. Okay, moving on to the next one. <coughs> Photons of energy Uh, yes, okay. Uh, Jignesh, Jignesh, right? Yes, uh, that PDF file will be forwarded today, don't worry. Okay, it will be coming in the group. Photons of energy 3.2 electron volt are incident on a metal surface. You are given energy of incident photon as 3.2 electron volt. The stopping potential for the emitted electron is 1.5 volt. Stopping potential is given. Work function of the surface is to be calculated W0, right? Yes. As I told you before, numerical questions mostly from Einstein's photoelectric equation. Einstein's photoelectric equation is going to be kinetic energy, maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons is equal to H nu, that is incident energy minus work function. Correct? Incident energy minus work function. Okay. <coughs> you are asked to find what is the work function of this particular metal. You are given incident frequency, I mean incident energy which is 3.2 electron volt. If so, 
your options are given in electron volt you can just keep this energy in electron volt provided you should know what is kinetic energy in electron volt right yes and we know whenever we are given stopping potential we are so happy because stopping potential value help you to find out kinetic energy directly if you have stopping potential 1.5 volt that means kinetic energy maximum is going to be 1.5 electron volt right that's it 1.5 electron volt so kinetic energy is also given 1.5 electron volt see now hope you started commenting yes yes smriti hanna ashkar yes okay so 1.7 that is option b you just rearrange this equation you will get it work function is going to be equal to h nu minus kinetic energy that is 3.2 minus 1.5 in electron volt and that option is 1.7 electron volt right in electron volt that is a correct answer so it's a direct question and uh, one point I, I want to remind you once again here if you give if you're given stopping potential in uh, in a question its value in electron volt you know just electron volt of that value will be kinetic energy maximum kinetic energy so that is why i told you whenever we have seen stopping potential in a question we are happy good question number 72 <clears throat> graph questions yes that is one of the very important uh, like types of question we get from this chapter especially we know we have three or four different types of graphs in this chapter so obviously it will be coming up <coughs> three curves are given one two and three that represent variation of photoelectric current and applied voltage this is photoelectric current here it is applied voltage we know to be specific this is accelerating potential right on the left side it is retarding potential good then uh, for two different intensities yes so you are given two different intensity graphs for a monochromatic light you are asked to identify the two curves which are for the same material for different intensities which out of these three given graphs which of them represent different intensity yes come on come on yes ash abhinav kartik ashmida venkata yes yes madhura mohammad ibrahim yes uh, many of you i am getting so many answers i am not able to read all of them you see we know intensity how will you identify if intensity is different the current saturation current right will be different so this is for lower intensity this is for higher intensity so the graph is one and two yes graphs are one and two so same intensity same intensity graphs are one and two that is our answer yes one and two what is the difference in the third graph what is the difference between these one two and three graphs like you know or, or this point and this point what is the difference with the third graph third graph yes four for what four different come on come on one and two for same intensity right yes but one two and three are of different frequency yes yes different frequency because they have different stopping potential v naught and v naught dash correct because in this case not intensity but frequency is changed right so you are asked to identify which are the two graphs for <coughs> different intensities so one and two are for different intensities but both of them for same frequency good we know this graph then question number 73 light of wavelength 2000 angstrom is incident on a metal surface of work function 4.2 in an experiment of photoelectric effect find the maximum kinetic energy in electron volt of the emitted ejected electrons you're asked to find what will be the maximum kinetic energy again we know the maximum kinetic energy equation we'll go for the same equation kinetic energy max is equal to h nu minus work function yes look at the question what are the informations given in you are not given frequency incident frequency instead you are given incident wavelength incident wavelength yes what else is given work function is given yes work function is given directly in electron volt and we need kinetic energy in which unit in electron volt <coughs> as per the question kinetic energy we need in electron volt done so we know we will be uh, calculating energy 
in terms of lambda in this case instead of h nu we can say h c by lambda correct h c by lambda exactly and minus work function very good then h c by lambda this is given in angstrom we know h c by lambda can be simplified using 1 2 4 0 divided by lambda in nanometer if it is given in angstrom put one more zero and write the angstrom value straight there correct yes so minus what is the work function 4.2 see then the whole result will be automatically in electron volt right kinetic energy will be obtained in electron volt correct so this is what we have to do and we can say look at this is going to be 124 divided by 20 124 divided by 20 is going to be uh, 6.8 right yes and we get sorry 6.2 wait a second so 124 divided by 20 so we get 62 by I mean, uh, 10 so you get 6.2 minus 4.2 which is going to be 2 electron volt yes good so 2 electron volt is your final answer yes exactly yeah so uh, kinetic energy automatically obtained in electron volt because we use it this particular calculation okay and uh, one mistake you commit when we substitute like this lambda 1240 divided by lambda in nanometers that is kinetic mean energy of that particular wave or a, or a given radiation if it is in angstrom 12400 divided by lambda in angstrom okay one more zero you have to put on top otherwise convert that angstrom value into nanometer then use this both ways fine right okay so we solved the first part of this question it is two electron volt is your kinetic energy okay then <coughs> look at the second part yes a fun yeah you read the question right yes and see standard answer in the question also if the intensity of light if the intensity of light is doubled find the change in stopping potential yes give me the answer what is yes sara yes ashkar yes yes ashkar you are the right yes so here we can say no change right in the b option b part of the question no change don't like try to confuse us right we know because intensity doubled it will not affect the stopping potential if you want to change the stopping potential you have to change uh, like kinetic energy of photoelectrons if you want to change kinetic energy of photoelectrons not the intensity you have to change the frequency we know kinetic energy is proportional to frequency of radiation and kinetic energy stopping potential is proportional to kinetic energy correct stopping potential is proportional to kinetic energy that kinetic energy is proportional to frequency so if you want to change stopping potential change frequency not intensity don't ask these kind of questions to us right don't confuse us right fine a question from 2020 paper good moving on to the next 74 yes yeah how would the stopping potential for a given photosensitive uh, surface change if the frequency of incident radiation were increased and the intensity of incident radiation were decreased justify your answer see again a, a almost the same question right first part you are asked to find what is change in so stopping potential change in stopping potential option a first case frequency is increased tell me what happens if you increase the stopping potential yes first one will increase second one no change yes i am getting so many answers thank you for the responses new increases means stopping potential also increases just before i wrote the relation here uh, stopping potential is proportional to kinetic energy proportional to frequency on increasing frequency stopping potential also will be increased yes but we know yes in the second case no change because stopping potential is independent of intensity we are trying to change the intensity in the second case so no change we know that is how it works correct question number 75 look at the graph again see the uh, graph questions are repeatedly coming in between variation of the stopping potential v naught versus frequency yes v naught versus frequency we have a similar graph right a similar graph for kinetic energy versus frequency yes okay this is v naught stopping potential versus frequency graph good 
and uh, the question is <coughs> uh, on two different photosensitive surfaces M1 and M2. M1 is one photosensitive surface, M2 is another one. The question is identify the surface which has greater value of work function. An easy question. Ashmida, yes. Snowflake, check your answer, okay? Right. So M1 and M2, we know the value here, like <coughs> where the graph meets on X frequency axis, X axis. <coughs> that stands for the stopping potential. I mean, the threshold frequency. Threshold frequency. Work function of a given metal is going to be H into threshold frequency. If threshold frequency is greater, work function is more. So that is for M1. And for M2, threshold frequency is some more later, right? So for threshold frequency of 2 is greater than threshold frequency of 1. So more work function. Work function of 2 is more than work function of 1 because of this reason. Don't, don't commit that kind of silly mistakes. Yes. But let me ask you something. What is slope of this graph? Yes. This was a very easy question. So let me just ask another one related to this. What is slope of this graph? Anybody? Slope of this graph, V0 versus uh, like frequency graph. What does the slope stands for? Yes, Abhinav. Yeah. Yes, Hanna. Yeah, Karthik. Yes, Abhinav, it is a constant, I know. What is that constant? That was my question. Yes, yeah, we're getting so many answers. Slope is going to be H by E, right? Slope of the graph is H by E. If it is stopping potential versus frequency, if it was kinetic energy versus frequency graph, it looks the same, but slope of the graph is just H, another constant, Planck's constant, here H by E, Planck's constant by charge of electron. Yes, we know, we revised that many times. Now, question number 76, <clears throat> if a photon, if photons of frequency nu and, uh, sorry, incident frequency nu are incident on the surface of a metal A and B, two different photosensitive materials, yes, their threshold frequencies are nu by 2 and nu by 3 respectively. The ratio of maximum kinetic energy uh, of electrons emitted from A to that of B, two different materials are given. Th I mean, threshold frequency of A is equal to, what is threshold frequency of A? Nu by 2, nu by 2. Threshold frequency of B is nu by 3, yes, nu by 3. So, these uh, are two different metals, A and B. And let me send same radiation. I am going to send same radiation to both of them, to both of them. Yes, and these radiations has, you know, same frequency. And they emit electrons. Photoelectric emission happens in both. Yes, question is, what will be ratio of kinetic energy of these emitted electrons? We know how to calculate kinetic energy of emitted electron. Kinetic energy on A, the metal A, is going to be equal to H nu is the incident frequency, correct? H nu is the incident energy. Yes, Ashmida, yes, let me complete that. H nu minus h into nu naught. For A, what is nu naught? Nu by 2. So, I will take this as nu by 2. On simplifying this, we get 2 h nu minus h nu by 2, which is simply h nu by 2. That is kinetic energy of emitted electron from the metal surface A. Correct? Metal surface A. What about B? From the metal surface B, kinetic energy of the metal surface B, h nu minus h into threshold frequency of B, which is nu by 3. On simplifying this, 3 h nu minus h nu, which is going to be h nu by 2, 2 h nu divided by 3. That is kinetic energy of B. Equation number 2. You are asked to find the ratio equation number 1 to equation number 2. Yes. So many answers. It is option B, I think. Yes. So kinetic energy A by kinetic energy B is equal to we know h nu by 2, the whole divided by 2 h nu divided by 3. Yes, so we can say h nu gets cancelled from this and that 2 comes down, this 3 goes up, so we get 3 by 4. Yes, as expected, yeah, many of you predicted 3 by 4 is the ratio. Okay. So, direct substitution of equations, I mean quantities once again in the equation, Einstein's photoelectric equation. Yes. 76 is also fine. Let's move on to the next. <coughs> 
estimate the frequency associated with a photon of energy 2 electron volt. Photon has a frequency that is to be calculated. Its energy is given. What is the energy? Energy is equal to 2 electron volt. You have to find out what is the corresponding frequency. We know how to find out energy of any electron, right? Energy of electron, <coughs> we can calculate in two different equations, either h into nu or it can also be h into c by lambda, right? Yes, h c by lambda. Good. Greater work function uh, has length. I can be used the reason previous graph. A greater work function, no, not about the length of the graph, dear. It is about where the graph starts from, from the x-axis, okay? You're talking about that M1, M2 question, right? Yes. So, the graph starts from the x-axis. That particular meeting point is the value of threshold of frequency. If the graph is longer, that doesn't mean that it has greater work function. No. It is the value from the x-axis. I hope you got it. <coughs> yes, E is equal to H nu. So, we have to find H from this E divided by nu. Sorry, we have to calculate frequency, not Planck's constant. So, nu is equal to E by H. So, you are given E. We know what is the value of H. It will be there in the front page of the question paper. Yes, don't come in mistake in that one anyway, right? So, 2 electron volt divided by H. Yes, you cannot use electron volt and some other unit together, right? Energy is given in electron volt. So, what should we do? we have to convert that into joules because value of h we are going to substitute here is 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to minus 34, minus 34 joules second. That is the unit of uh, Planck's constant, right? 6.626 .6 into 10 raised to minus 34 joule seconds. Yes, it is in joules. This one is in electron volt, not possible. We have to convert that 2 electron volt into joules, 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19. That is the only thing you have to be careful. The rest of the calculation is easy. 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to minus 34. Okay, 10 raised to minus 34. So, this value is going to be 2 into 1.6 divided by 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to 15 meters. I mean, hertz, right? It is the unit of the frequency. Okay, so convert that electron volt energy into joules. That is what we have to do. Okay, because this is electron volt, energy measured in electron volt here. Energy unit is used here as joules, which is not possible. We have to convert either this into electron volt. We don't know that. But you know how to convert this into energy. Yes, so question number 77. You just simplify this and you will get the answer. Okay. Right. So, I just wanted to specify this part. That's it. Be careful in the calculation. 78. Next question. <coughs> Photons of energies 1 electron volt and 2 electron volt are successively incident on a metallic surface of work function 0 0.5 electron volt. The ratio of kinetic energy of most energetic photoelectrons in the two cases will be. See, I think you can very easily uh, like calculate this. You are given two uh, energy photons. Like, you know, first one has one electron volt energy. Incident photon has an energy one electron volt here. In this case, two electron volt, two different uh, radiations. Both of them hit on a surface of work function 0 0.5 electron, one after the other. Okay? Yes. So, uh, first one, this incident on the metal surface, photo electrons coming out. Later, two electron volt radiation hit, electrons coming out from that. So, that part, we have to find out what is the ratio of kinetic energy in these two cases. So, we know kinetic energy is equal to H nu minus work function. Correct? See, I don't want to continue with this because it's the exactly same way what we have done before. Just substitute the values. Kinetic energy of the first case is equal to H into nu. What is the initial energy? Incident radiation, incident energy, 1 electron volt minus what is the work function? 0 0.5 electron volt. So, kinetic energy 1 is equal to 0 0.5 electron volt. Yes, kinetic energy 2 in the second case, we have incident energy 2 electron volt. 2 electron volt minus, what is the work function? It is still 0 0.5 only because the same metal, different radiation and we get 1.5 electron volt. That is kinetic energy in the second case. You are asked to find what is the ratio of these two. See, question from 2020 paper. How simply we calculate, right? Kinetic energy 1 
by kinetic energy 2 is 0 0.5 by 1.5 that is 1 by 3. <coughs> yes, many of you already solved. Right, so that was the question option C, right? 1 is to 3. Yes, that is why I told you this part is for us to relax, right? Some simple, simple questions. <coughs> Next one, 79. An electron is accelerated. Yes, electron is accelerated through a potential difference of 100 volt. Calculate the de Broglie wavelength associated with it. Whenever we deal with de Broglie wavelength, be careful. We have different form of the same equation, right? De Broglie wavelength can be H by P, the very basic equation for uh, de Broglie wavelength. And then later we replace that P, linear momentum, with kinetic energy as root of 2m into E. E is the kinetic energy. Yes. Later that kinetic energy we replaced by root of 2m instead of kinetic energy we wrote q into v where v is the accelerating potential correct accelerating potential and for the case of electron we have a special equation for de Broglie wavelength of electron what was that for electron de Broglie wavelength lambda equals to because for the electron we have mass a fixed mass and a charge right we substitute those two values here h is a constant numerical constant we know Planck's constant we have 2 is another numerical constant, m <coughs> for electron, when you go for electron, uh, mass of electron, then charge of electron and we got one equation 1.227 divided by root of accelerating potential, right, that much nanometers, be careful, nanometers, 1.227 nanometers, mm. root of V, what is that V stands for, accelerating potential, if you know this equation, in two seconds, you can calculate this and go to the next question. Time saving question also. 2021 paper. Yes. See, lambda E is equal to 1.227. What is the accelerating potential given here? 100. Root of 100 is going to be 10. So, we get 0 0.1227 nanometers because root of 10, I mean 100 is going to be 10. 1.227 divided by 10 is going to be this much nanometers. Okay. Right, so that is question number two, uh, 79, a uh, question from de Broglie hypothesis, de Broglie wavelength, I told you, de Broglie wavelength is one of the repeating concepts in, in the papers and you have three different equations and the third equation we specially assigned, specially modified for electron. Got it? Yes. Okay, next one. <clears throat> a proton... See, actually it is a proton, okay. A proton and an alpha particle have the same kinetic energy. The ratio of de Broglie wavelength associated with the proton to that of alpha particle. Yes, see, they corrected here. It is a proton, yes. So, a proton and an alpha particle have the same kinetic energy. Lambda, yes, I told you before. When we play with de Broglie wavelength, be careful. The first step and the most important step is to identify appropriate equation. Here, the question talk is talking about kinetic energy. So, we can go for H by root of 2m into E, kinetic energy equation. And we have two particles. Those two particles as per the question, they have same kinetic energy. So, kinetic energy is a constant in this case. Correct? And 2, what is 2? 2 is another numerical constant. And H is always constant in this equation. We can say, in this case, in the given particular case, lambda is inversely proportional to root of the mass of the particle. Lambda is proportional to 1 by root m. Yes, because h, 2 and e are constants. Now, when we go for proton, lambda of proton is going to be 1 by root of mass of proton. Lambda of alpha particle, the second particle, lambda alpha is 1 by root of mass alpha. Therefore, you are asked to find the ratio. See, we are asked to find the ratio proton to that of alpha particle. We have to get lambda p by lambda alpha. See, if it is given in the question properly, you have to follow that because both ratios will be given. Proton to alpha, alpha to proton, both ratios will be given in the options. Yeah, these people, people are tricky. Now, if it is lambda p by lambda m, it will be just the other way around, right? Root of mass of alpha divided by root of mass of proton. We know what is alpha, mass of alpha is 4u and what is ma mass of proton is just u, 2, u, u gets cancelled, we have root of 4, that is 2, 
and 2 is the option B, right? Yes. So, that is what we have to do for these kind of questions. So, when as I told you before, when we get questions from D blog, yes. Okay, yes, Ashmita, Karthik, yes, many of you answered already. <coughs> that was an easy one, right? So, but choose the equation wisely. That is what we have to do. Okay, three different equations and electrons special equation I also I mentioned. Just remember those concepts there from De Broglie hypothesis. We expect one question, yes. Okay. Right, so that was from uh, electro, I mean like dual nature of matter and radiation. As I told you right in the beginning, I am repeat, I am just going to repeat the same thing once again. That is uh, like uh, experimental study of photoelectric emission. Factors affecting photoelectric emission. Okay, all the graphs, yes, we will come back to the graphs maybe at the end. See all those graphs and that part is very, very important as per the analysis, we get repeating question from that part, right? Okay, the next one is uh, uh, Einstein's photoelectric equation. Be very careful, the most confusing part is in the numerical questions, we may forget to convert that electron volt into joules. Sometimes we won't convert, sometimes we convert, right? So be careful what you have to do in that question and do appropriately. Okay, apart from that, that chapter is very easy for us and we can score uh, all the questions, you know, we can score full in all the questions coming from dual nature of matter and radiation very easily. Now, atoms, <coughs> atoms and nuclei, we are going to do together. I'll start with atoms, yes, a few questions from atoms and here also we have these four, uh, four topics given, almost equal weightage as per the analysis, right? We don't have any bigger, longer graphs in any of the parts, it's almost identical. Yeah, we are getting almost all the types of questions from each, I mean, all of these four topics. See, the topics listed here is alpha particle scattering and Rutherford nuclear model of atom. We know alpha particle scattering experiment. This is the first topic. We get, you know, repeating question from that part. Second one, Bohr model of hydrogen atom. Yes, Bohr model of hydrogen atom. Radius of hydrogen atom, right? Energy level of hydrogen atom. Atomic spectra, hydrogen spectra. Transition from one to the other, right? The spectral lines that is coming, the line spectra is the third uh, topic, Lyman series, Balmer series, right? You know, all those kind of transition from 1 to 2, 2 to 1, that kind of things. It's coming up here, we get repeating question from that part also. And followed by de Broglie uh, explanation of Bohr, second postulate, and uh, that is not that important for us this year. So, just make sure, atoms is a very small chapter, we know, so we have few concepts only there to learn, make it perfect. We don't want to lose even half a mark from that chapter, okay? Let us try a few questions, uh, starting with this. A hydrogen atom initially in the ground state absorbs a photon which excites it into n is equal to 4. It was in the ground state, now it is excited to n is equal to 4 level. Estimate frequency of that particular photon. Yes. <coughs> if it is in the ground state, we know n is equal to 1. Hydrogen atom. Can someone tell me what is the energy level of ground state of a hydrogen atom? Energy level. In electron volt, what is the value of energy of the first energy level? Ground state. Yes, Ashmida. I got the first message, first chat, first response from Ashmida. Minus 13.6 electron volt. Yeah, I am getting so many answers now. Yes. Yeah. Now, the fourth one. See, it is going to n is equal to 4. As per the question, n is equal to 4. I need that value also, n is equal to 4. Anybody, anybody. n is equal to 4, what is the energy? Come on, come on, come on, come on. What is it? Yes, Ashmita, once again, 0 0.85 electron volt, minus. Correct? Yes. Yeah, 0 0.85 electron volt. I told you to remember those four values at least, the first four. What are the first four values? Minus 13.6. What are the remaining? Minus <coughs> 3.4 electron volt. And in between we have minus 1.51 electron volt. Followed by 0 0.85 electron volt, right? Yes, anyway, in this case, in this question, we need only this. Electron in this energy level absorbs a photon and it is excited to <coughs> n is equal to 4 n is equal to 4. So, that electron is now here, like, you know, in this orbit. How much energy will this electron absorb? That we know, right? Third postulate of Bohr atom model. When atom excites or 
de-excite. Like you know, when it transfers from one energy level to the other, energy absorbed or energy released is given by delta E is equal to EF minus EI. Energy final minus energy initial, right? What is the final energy level here? It went to N is equal to 4. Its energy is minus 0 0.85. What is the initial energy level? From where does it go? From the ground state. So, delta E in this case is going to be minus 0 0.85 minus of minus 13.6. Someone help me. What is this value? 13.6 minus 0 0.85. That is the energy released, I mean, that is the energy absorbed by the photon. To excite electron, to excite electron from where to where? From n is equal to 1 to n is equal to 2, I mean, sorry, n is equal to 4. This value is 17, I mean, sorry, 12.75, right? Yes, 12.75 electron volt, correct. So, that much energy is absorbed by the electron. But that was not the question. What is the question? If that is the energy absorbed, you are asked to calculate what is the frequency of that absorbed photon. This is the energy of the absorbed photon, right? Yes, energy of photon. We calculated energy of photon. Now it is easy. If you know energy of a photon, we know how to calculate frequency. That delta E can be equated to H nu. Therefore, nu is equal to energy of the photon divided by Planck's constant. That will give you frequency. What is delta E? 12.75. But it is in electron volt. Be careful. What is the value of H you are going to substitute? 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to minus 34 joule second. Yes. In, in the nominator, we have electron volt. In the denominator, it is joule second. We will never let it go like that, right? What should we do? We have to convert. Yes. Yes. We have to convert that into we can say electron volt should be converted to joules and 12.75 <coughs> into 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19. Now it is in joules divided by 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to minus 34. Yes, simplify this, we will get the final answer. See, 12.75 into 1.6, the whole divided by 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to minus Sorry, 6.6, I am taking the powers together. We get into 10 raised to 15. That much hurts. <coughs> okay, so this is the point I want to uh, like remind you once again. These kind of calculations, you don't, you cannot go without converting it. Don't commit mistakes there, convert, okay? Make it the same unit. So if you simplify that further, you will get something approximately 3 into 10 raised to 15. 3.1 something or something like that. That much hurts, okay? That is a simplified value. That is a frequency. So, it is coming from uh, like Bohr postulate, right? Electron excites from one orbit to the other. This is the way how we can calculate energy absorbed or energy released. In this case, energy is absorbed because electron is excited to higher energy level. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, Chris. Fine. So, let's move on to the next part. Yeah, next question. The radius of the innermost electron orbit of a hydrogen atom is 5.3 into 10 raised to minus 11. Can anyone say what is the name of this particular distance, that particular radius? Anybody? What do we call this distance? What do we call this distance? Come on, come on, come on, guys. Break your keypad, keep typing. Yes, yes, Ashmida. Okay, Zabi. It is Bohr radius, yeah. Now I am getting so many answers. Bohr radius, first orbit, radius of the first orbit, yes, yes. Thank you for the responses. Radius of the <coughs> first orbit of hydrogen atom is going to be Bohr radius. And that is what given. You are asked to calculate what is the radius of the nth orbit using that value. We know in hydrogen atom or according to Bohr atom model, radius of any orbit is R0 n square. Yes, R0 n square. So, when you substitute R0 here, that R0 value is given 5.3 into 10 raised to minus 11. I can see the answers coming up there. So, 5.3 into 10 raised to minus 11 into, into what? n square. <coughs> what is your value given here for n? That is 3. So, 3 square is going to be 9 and you will get 
47.7 into 10 raised to minus 11 meters. That is the answer for the first part of this question. Very easy. We know R is equal to R0 n square. You are given values of R0 and n. You are asked to just multiply them. Okay. Fine. So that is the first part. Question A. <coughs> now, second part of this question. B part. Total energy of an electron in the first excited state of hydrogen atom is 3.4. Yes. This is minus 3.4. Okay. Total energy will be negative. Minus 3.4 electron volt. Right. There is a minus sign here. Find out its kinetic energy and potential energy in that state. What do you mean by this first excited state? What is the value of n there? First excited. For a ground state, then first excited, right? n is equal to 2. Yes, n is equal to 2. So that is one of the... Yeah, exactly. Yes, Ash, the, he already solved that question. So let us keep going. We know the relation kinetic energy is 2, potential energy is 2, total energy of an electron in any energy level is going to be equal to 1 is 2, minus 2 is 2, minus 1. Correct? See, magnitudes of kinetic energy and potent, I mean, total energy will be the same. Whatever be the kinetic energy, negative of that is the what? Total energy. Fine. And here we can say kinetic energy and total energy are equal by magnitude, but kinetic energy is going to be positive. So first question, nothing to do. B part, option one, like you know, first case, kinetic energy is going to be negative of minus 3.4. We get 3.4 electron volt. Yes. And the second part, C, we have, sorry, second part, we have to find out potential energy. We know potential energy is two times of total energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy always will be two times, double of total energy and uh, like you know kinetic energy. But two times of <coughs> kinetic energy with the opposite sign, like you know minus two. Or double of total energy, total energy will always be negative, I told you. So potential energy is going to be negative of 3.4 into 2. So we have 6.8 electron volt minus that's it. That question was easy for us. Yes. So we know the concepts here. Bohr radius we just mentioned. And in this case, relation. Kinetic potential energy and total energy relation of electrons in any energy levels is given. Using that easily, we could find the values of energy. Okay. Now, electron jumps from the fourth to first orbit in an atom. How many maximum number of spectral lines can be emitted by the atom? to which this series lines correspond. Okay, two questions. Question number one, you have to identify number of transitions possible. Number of transitions possible. Question number two, it is identify the spectral line. Which spectral line is this? That is the second part of the question. See, first part we can easily solve. Actually, what does happen here in the... Uh, fourth orbit to first orbit it is coming back. So n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, 3 and 4. From the fourth orbit this electron is going to come back to the first orbit. Okay. It has different options. It can start from here, go straight to the first orbit. It's okay. One possibility. Coming to the third orbit, later going to the first orbit. Or coming to the second orbit like and then going to this, right? So different different types of possibilities, different types of uh, like spectral lines it can emit. And we can say uh, like how many transitions possible. So number of transitions possible, we have the equation n into n minus 1 divided by 2, where n is the number of energy level or the orbit from which it is coming back to the initial one, right? So n into n minus 1 into 2, in this question you are given n is equal to 4, right? It is coming from the fourth orbit. So n is equal to 4. Therefore, what is the number of transitions possible? 4 into 4 minus 1 divided by 2, that is 4 into 3 divided by 2, that is 6 transitions. Correct? Yes. 6 transitions possible. n into n minus 1 by 2. Just substitute that value of n there. That's it. Fine. Then the second part of the question is to identify the spectral line. Can anybody tell me what is what this spectral line, which transition is belongs to? And <coughs> it is coming from 4th to 1st. 
right it is coming from n is equal to 4 to n is equal to 1 fourth to first all radiations coming back to the first yes first energy level what is the name of that series Lyman series good it belongs to Lyman series okay fine so we solved that question remember this equation number of transitions possible n into n minus 1 by 2 a question from 2016 paper moving on to the next yeah transition right so these kind of questions you can see repeatedly in past papers figure shows energy level diagram of hydrogen atom okay we know energy level diagram of hydrogen atom and even we remember their values right the first four values yes we are ready come on what next find out the transition which results in the emission of a photon of wavelength 496 nanometer yes 496 nanometer is the wavelength of the emitted electron you have to you have to support that particular transition whether it is a b c d e or f out of these given transition one of the transition emits <coughs> sorry a, a, a radiation of wavelength 496 nanometer we know when electron comes back it emits energy right that energy in the form of a radiation of given wavelength lambda first of all let us write down the values 13.6 electron volt 13.6 divided by uh, 4 is going to be minus 3.4 electron volt next one 1.51 electron volt and the fourth one minus 0.85 electron volt yes that's what I told you we know these have values right we are ready yes see <coughs> during this transition just like in the previous question we have discussed energy released delta e is equal to energy final minus energy initial that is coming from uh, a is coming from 4 to 3 then b is coming from 4 to 2 like that you know so the energy difference we have to calculate so how much energy will this transition release you know during this transition f how much energy will be released 13.6 minus 3.4 correct how much energy will this be released in the e transition 13.6 minus 1.51 like that that is the energy released in this process okay so first of all what are what are we trying to do we have to find out which transition which transition provides this mag like wavelength so we are going to find wavelength of I mean energy corresponding to this particular wavelength and that is easy for us right what is energy corresponding to that wavelength delta e is hc by lambda and lambda is in nanometer and that itself is 496 and I will round it off into 500 yes then the calculation is going to be much easier now so HC by lambda 1240 it is nanometer right so 40 divided by 500 why I slightly approximated okay so remember that that change will be there in our calculation so we have to identify the uh, like uh, energy correspondingly see 124 by 5 so delta e <coughs> yes so tell me what is this this value now so we can say 124 by 5 so we get 6.28 right that much electron volt correct see this energy difference this much energy difference we have to obtain from one of these transitions now can you tell me which transition gives you that oh sorry 124 is going to be 248 right 2.48 electron volt yes 2.48 electron volt see which transition is going to be provided like you know for which transition we are getting this value 2.48 electron volt see check these two right yes so we identify the transition in which the uh, energy changes from minus 0 0.85 to 3.4 correct so which transition is that this transition transition b so during transition b this much energy will be released right and that energy correspond to a wavelength of 496 so answer for this question is going to be transition b yes transition b good what we have to do for this question to identify the transition b part of the question look at the b part 
B part of the question says, which transition correspond to the emission of radiation of maximum wavelength? Justify your answer. Maximum wavelength and minimum wavelength calculation, be careful. Maximum wavelength is for minimum frequency, right? Minimum frequency, yes. Minimum frequency means minimum energy also because energy is equal to h nu. So maximum wavelength is for minimum energy transition. You can easily find out the transition in which energy is least, least energy release. Yeah, yes, many of you like you know already suggested that answer. A, transition A. This is the least energy difference, 1.51 minus 0 0.85. So least energy transition. How do we know it is the least energy transition? Because the difference between these two is the least out of all these transitions. Right? This transition gives you minimum energy difference. Right, so we considered both, we, we found out both the uh, transitions. Transition corresponding to 496 nanometer is B, transition corresponding to maximum wavelength is A. Right, okay, so that is what we have to do for this question. Now, let's move on to the next. Using Redberg formula, calculate longest wavelength belonging to Lyman and Balmer series of hydrogen spectrum in which region these transitions lie. Okay, <coughs> uh, you have to identify the region, that means which region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Yes, we know that, right? First of all, let us calculate those values. See, Lyman using Redberg formula, Redberg formula we know 1 by lambda is equal to R into 1 by Ni square minus 1 by Nm square, right? That is the equation, yes. And uh, we have to calculate the longest wavelength. Again, longest wavelength. Longest wavelength is going to be shortest to frequency, right? Longest lambda is minimum frequency. Minimum frequency means minimum energy transition. Minimum energy transition for Lyman series, what is that value? For Lyman series, we can say it is from n is equal to 2 to n is equal to 1. Correct? The nearest to transition. That is the least energy transition for Lyman series. Okay. For we can say <coughs> minimum value of Lyman series 1 by lambda is equal to R into. Yes. R into. What is Ni? It is going to be 1. Right? Ni and Nf values are given. 1 minus 1 by 2 square. That is 1 by 4. We know it is R into 3 by 4. Therefore, lambda is going to be equal to 4 divided by 3R. That is the equation. That is the value of wavelength. Let <coughs> the minimum wavelength of Lyman series. Okay. Right. Now, what is the value of R? Redberg form, Redberg constant, we know R is equal to 1.0974 into 10 raised to 7 meter inverse. That is the value of R. Correct? Yes. See, <coughs> in almost all these kind of questions, we have to find out 1 by R. Okay. So, instead of dividing by this R, if you remember 1 by R, that is easier, 0 0.911 into 10 raised to minus 7, okay, that is 1 by R value, just like we remember 1 by E value, right, 1 by 1.6 is going to be 0 0.625, 0 0.625 into 10 raised to 19, similarly we remember 1 by epsilon also, because in all the Gauss's theorem uh, like questions, we get 1 by 4, 1 by epsilon 0. 1 by epsilon 0 is what? 0 0.11 into 10 raised to plus 12. And also if you remember 1 by r, see, you can easily substitute here. So, 4 divided by 3 into, what is its value? 0 0.911 into 10 raised to minus 7. So, if you substitute this, 1.33, right? 4.3 is going to be 1.33, 0 0.911 into 10 raised to minus 7. See, instead of dividing, you can just multiply now. That is easier. Yes, so that much meters is the longest wavelength of Lyman series. Okay, so longest wavelength is shortest uh, like frequency and least energy transition. If you do the same thing in Balmer series, second one is Balmer. Yes, you are asked to find both Lyman and Balmer series. When we come to Balmer series, the shortest energy, right, longest wavelength transition is from n is equal to 3 to n is equal to 2, right, exactly, Sanj, that is the value, 1.21 into 10 raised to minus 7, yes, <coughs> now, 
Here also we have to do the same thing 1 by lambda is equal to r into 1 by 4 minus 1 by 9, correct? So we will go for r into that is 36, 5. Therefore, lambda minimum lambda here is 36 by 5r, okay? Here also we can use the reciprocal of that value that is 36 by 5 into 0, I mean, 0 0.911 into 10 raised to minus 7. Yes, just simplify that, you will get the value of minimum uh, wavelength of Balmer series, okay? So, whenever you are asked to calculate minimum wavelength, uh, that is, I mean, longest wavelength, it is minimum frequency. If you are asked to find minimum wavelength, shortest wavelength, maximum frequency, maximum energy, right? At that time, it will be coming from infinity to the initial energy level of that particular that particular transition, right? Yeah, if maximum of Lyman, shortest wavelength of Lyman series is coming from infinity to 1. For Balmer series, infinity to 2, right? That is shortest wavelength. Longest wavelength is nearest transition. Okay, and there was one more question to identify their region. We know Lyman is ultraviolet region and Balmer is the only visible spectrum and visible spectral line in that out of five spectral lines. Others are in infrared region. Yes, okay. That was easy. Now, look at this. Or postulate, derive the expression for total energy of electron. And uh, like, you know, energy equation, E n is equal to uh, like <coughs> z square m e raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square n square h square, which we simplified E n is equal to minus 13.6 into z square by n square electron volt. This derivation is one of the repeating questions from this, but only two derivations you have to learn. One is this energy and the second one followed by that radius, you know. R is directly proportional to n square. We used that in one of the questions before, right? These are the two repeating derivation questions from this chapter actems. And uh, just make sure they are okay with those derivations and very easy derivations also, right? But we cannot by heart these equations. We don't need this equation for numerical questions. We won't get numerical questions from this, okay? Yes, but derivation purpose, we need that equation. Okay, fine. Yes, coming up now, nuclear. Okay, next few questions are from nuclear chapter. And nuclear chapter, since we have a very big deleted portion from that, that reduces the size of the chapter much. And we have only four chapter topics listed here. As you know, uh, here we are getting repeating questions from this part. And fourth one is also a little important, right? And here we are getting all the types of questions from this part. And let us see the uh, topics. First one is uh, the size of the nucleus. Size of the nucleus in the sense, we, we <coughs> prepared a profile of the nucleus, right? How big the nucleus, size of the nucleus. Then um, oh, we, we checked uh, that actually gave us the volume, right? Volume or radius of the nucleus. We got the equation R0 A raised to 1 by 3 something. So that is the and uh, density of the nucleus, mass of the nucleus. These kind of basic details we discussed from this topic. Correct? So that from that part we get repeating questions. Basics of like how big the nucleus is, what is its mass, like what will be its density, that kind of relations, you know, that uh, basics you have to make perfect. Second topic is mass, energy, equivalence and binding energy. Binding energy part. We have two graphs <coughs> from this chapter. <coughs> Sorry. One is the binding energy per nucleon curve and the second one is potential energy of uh, like nucleons with inter-nucleon distance. We'll come to that. Okay? So, uh, that uh, binding energy per nucleon topic, that graph is coming from this. Yes, nuclear force. The other graph I mentioned is coming from this topic, nuclear force, right? And the fourth one is nuclear energy, that is fission and fusion reaction. We get some uh, like uh, numerical questions also from that part. So, these are the major topics we have to go through in nuclei. Let us quickly do some questions from that part. Ratio of the nuclear density of two nuclei. Having mass numbers, mass numbers is given A1 as 64 and A2 is 125. What is the ratio of nuclear density? Yes, don't uh, commit mistakes. Exactly, so all of you are giving me the answer D. So you have a strong hold on that concept, nuclear density. Even if I write A1 and A2 here, you won't look at that, right? Ratio is 1 is to 1. Why ratio is 1? 
nuclear density is independent of mass number right independent of mass number whatever be the mass number it doesn't matter density will be the same it is independent of mass number okay so that didn't work i'll try another way okay yes 87 <coughs> calculate the binding energy of an alpha particle in mev see these kind of questions we have tried many times you are given a uh, mass of proton mass of neutron and mass of helium nucleus these are the given informations and one more information is given one atomic mass unit is equal to 931 mev per c square <coughs> we know how to calculate binding energy it is going to be delta m mass defect into 931 mev yes how to calculate Yes, how to calculate the binding energy, I mean delta M, that is to be calculated, then you can multiply with 931, that will give you binding energy. So what is delta M? Delta M is like uh, total part, uh, like expected mass, that is going to be number of protons, right, number of protons into mass of proton, plus number of neutrons into mass of neutron. This is the expected mass of any nucleus, because inside the nucleus there will be protons and neutrons, Total mass is the expected mass of the nucleus, but we know actual mass of the nucleus is always less than that, right? That is called the mass defect, missing mass. That is calculated in this way. So if you come to an alpha particle, in alpha particle we have how many protons? An alpha particle is represented like 2He4, correct? That means there are two protons and 4 minus 2 neutrons. So two protons and two neutrons. We can say delta M is equal to 2 into mass of proton is what? 1.0007828 plus what is mass of neutrons? That also 2. So 2 into 1.008665. This is the total expected mass from which, you know, we have to subtract actual mass of the helium nucleus. That is also given in this. So we get 4.002800. Okay. Yes. So now you, you just try this out. So we can just <coughs> add <coughs> and subtract. You know, we have to add these two terms and subtract. You will get some delta M in some atomic mass unit. So that value we have to multiply, right? By to calculate the binding energy, we have to multiply that value with 931 and you can leave that unit in MEV. That will be your binding energy. So we have done these kind of questions before we tried. So just practice this question. We have a little lengthy calculations. Calculation in the sense there is no much difficult calculation. We have so many decimal places to take care of. Be careful when you simplify. Okay. Right. So this is the way how we calculate binding energy of any given nucleus. Uh, expected mass minus actual, actual mass. That is the missing mass delta M multiplied by 931. That much MeV is the binding energy. Okay, right. <coughs> Calculate the energy released in this reaction. Energy released in MEV in the following reaction. See, this is the energy, uh, I mean the reaction given. It is a fusion reaction. You can see H, uh, it's deuterium and this is tritium. They combine together to form a helium nucleus, right? <coughs> along with that some neutron is coming up and there will be some energy released we are interested with this q value what is the energy released in this particular process correct these kind of questions we can, can be asked in two different ways one mass can be given you know mass of these uh, these reactants and products that can be given or it will be given in terms of binding energy okay binding energy of this and binding <coughs> binding energy of the <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So binding energy of the reactants or products can be given. So I have, I think the next question is based on that. So for this question, we can say the energy released can be, energy released is going to be delta M into 931 MeV. What is delta M in this case? In the case of a nucleus, we know that delta M is the mass defect. Actual mass, I mean expected mass of the nucleus minus actual mass of the nucleus that is what we did for binding energy correct but energy released in this process that delta m is going to be equal to delta m is going to be mass of 
reactants given minus mass of the products okay mass of products so if you do this <coughs> you are given mass of reactants right what are the reactants here 1 h2 and 1 h3 so you are given 1 h2 mass and 1 h3 mass sum of these two so that is what we have to go for these two minus minus what are the products we have two products here two products here one is helium nucleus and the second one is a neutron see a neutron also is there right so you are given mass of those two this is the products correct and these are the reactants so take the sum of these two so we can say energy released i will just give you that equation and you try that out see energy released in this process is equal to mass of uh, like h2 plus mass of the tritium 31 see this is the mass of the products i mean reactants minus mass of the products is going to be helium nucleus helium plus mass of neutron so this is the delta m value the whole multiple uh, 931 mev we know why did we multiply 931 always right 931 is 931 mev is the energy <coughs> energy corresponding to one atomic mass unit if you convert one atomic mass unit into energy we get 931 mev that is why always we get delta m this delta m always will be obtained in atomic mass unit look at the unit given see this unit is u u right all of them are in atomic mass unit always it will be given in atomic mass unit so you will get delta m in atomic mass unit that will be multiplied with 931 because one atomic mass unit is equivalent to 931 mev yes so you just substitute those values all values are given just substitute and simplify you can find out the final answer yes okay fine moving on to the next calculate the energy in the fusion reaction yes again a fusion reaction is given here almost the same right slightly different where binding energy of uh, 1h2 is 2.23 mev and of 2h3 is 7.73 mev i told you this before right we have two types of questions coming from this part one is in terms of mass like in the previous question you will be given mass of the reactants and mass of the products okay but here you are given what binding energies so remember energy released in this process q is the energy released right is <coughs> change in binding energy change in binding energy that much energy will be released if if binding energy is given in the question that means mass of mean like the reactants and products binding energy initial and final binding energy is given then just find out what is a change in binding energy that will be that will be what that will be the energy released so what is that delta b e stands for binding energy final minus binding energy initial total binding energy final minus total binding energy initial can you tell me what is the total binding energy uh, final see what is the product here we have a, a one single value right uh, and n doesn't have any binding energy given so this is 3 2h3 like you know excited helium it has a binding energy 7.73 mev so binding energy final is 7.73 mev minus that is a total binding energy okay not binding energy per nucleon that is a total binding energy given yes so for this nucleus this much binding energy it possesses by this much binding energy that is a final binding energy the product minus what is <coughs> binding energy initially see initially we have you know two different nuclei each of them have binding energy given right uh like you know they are same only two different nuclei we fuse together and they have binding energy given here so what is that one plus one more that is going to be 2.23 plus one more 2.23 so this is what the energy released see how easily we can calculate it so if it is given in binding energy term it is easier right to calculate final binding energy total final binding energy minus total initial binding energy that is what we have to do so 7.73 minus 4.46 is the energy difference here right and what is the uh, the binding energy i mean that the what is the result finally energy released ashkar ashkar what about the neutron see binding energy is only for nuclei right 
binding energy. Otherwise, it will be binding energy per nucleon. So, this is only for binding energy of a nucleus. This neutron is not a part of any nucleus. So it does not have any binding energy there. That is why it is not given. Got it? Yes. And this value is 3.28 MeV. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, that is what uh, answer for this question. So, I told you in two different ways we get the question, either in terms of mass or in terms of binding energy, right? In both the ways, we learned how to solve that question. Be careful, right? Next one. Which of the following statements, which <coughs> of the following statement is not true for nuclear forces? Yes, nuclear forces, we know we listed so many properties. They are very short range force, right? Uh, like uh, <coughs> they are stronger, uh, strongest force in nature is going to be the strong nuclear force. So many things we know the properties. Let us go through the given options. We have to find out the wrong statement, not true statement. They are stronger than Coulomb forces. Yes, they are stronger than, say I am getting so many answers. Yes, yes. So, it is a true statement. That is not the answer, okay. That is a true statement. They have uh, about the same magnitude for different pair of nucleons. In the sense, for proton, proton or for proton, neutron or even for neutron, neutron, we have the same strength. Like, you know, their, their magnitude is the same. So, that is a true statement. We know that. It is charge independent, right? Okay. They are always attractive. Yes, this is the answers you suggested, right? It can be repulsive. We know the potential energy graph when R is less than 0 0.8 uh, nuclear force is going to be repulsive. So, this is the wrong statement. It can be repulsive. Yes. Okay. So, that is the correct answer. Then, yeah, then we have to just go through that long answer question from this part. See here. Yes, Sanj, that was the distance I mentioned, 0 0.8. So, this was the uh, question I was talking about before, right in the beginning, this graph, okay. So, make sure you are able to, uh, like, explain what, wh how the binding energy per nucleon vary with respect to mass number. That will be the question. So, make this graph perfect, one of the repeating question from this chapter. The other graph, more repeating one, is this, like, you know, like, uh, potential energy versus Internucleon distance graph, potential energy versus internucleon distance, right. So, potential energy can be negative or positive. Based on that, you know, you have to explain what is the nature of the nuclear force based on this graph. We know sometimes it is going to be attractive, sometimes repulsive, right, sometimes zero. And after 3 fm, it reduces to zero because nuclear force is operating only between zero to 3 fm. All these properties we understood from the graph. So, make it perfect, okay. Right. Yeah, uh, that's it from uh, like modern physics part. And we have done almost uh, like questions from almost all the, all the topics. And usually that part is a little, uh, as I told you right at the beginning, a little easy. And uh, uh, we have to score full mark from that particular part. You are not ready to lose even half a mark from that. Practice that concepts. Once again, revise them well. And the last module we have to go for just uh, 10 questions more from electromagnetic waves and uh, like uh, semiconductors, right? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes sir. Yes, sir. So that are the uh, <coughs> questions remaining from that particular topic and that we will, uh, yes, maybe just 10 more questions from that. How okay. are they, are they 10 minutes will do. Yes. Okay. So before that, that. <coughs> before that, shall we go for the Mendy once again? Yeah, sure. Yes, so uh, sure. we had one interesting competition here before. Yeah, yeah, I gone through it. As after, great it was. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> after optics, and I think we'll give one more chance for them, uh, guys. In yes, Ashmita. Yes, thank you for the support. Let's uh, let's try to bring our Mendy war back. Okay, just give me a second. Yes, yeah, sure. We'll just set it up. You have to enter another code. Okay. Sorry, yeah, so already we, we logged. Yeah, it was positive. Okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, I have to just log out this one because it's from another account. Okay. Uh, this is login. Just, I'll give one minute, just one minute to complete it. Okay.
So you don't need the, the Microsoft account? I'll just yeah. log in. Yeah. Guys, be ready. Be ready with your device. Go to menti.com. I'll show you that uh, particular code once again. Questions based on uh, like, you know, modern physics only. Okay. Uh, just be ready. Dot is the dot. Is Physics dot. Dot is the dot. Yes, guys, I'll set it up in a minute. Be ready, okay? Go to mendy.co and ready to join. I'll just show you the code. Really? Yeah, I think. So I think it is in the password. What we can do? What can we do? This is correct, right? Yeah. Hmm? I'm going to go check it. Technical error we can do. Yeah. And then we can do so. It's going to drop it. You can try from there. Okay, right. Okay. Fine, I think uh, like we need some more time. Okay, let me, let me just bring it back for you right after this session. Okay, within uh, 5, 15 minutes. Yeah. You will finish this, right? So we can, yeah. Yeah, you just continue. Guys, please be ready with the device, okay? I'll be bringing back it soon, okay? Yeah, please enjoy. The last yeah, sure. session. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. <coughs> yeah, okay, dears. Uh, again, welcome back to my session. Yesterday we met. Hope all of you are uh, doing your best in the final lab. Last two easiest two chapters. I'm with you, EM waves and semi-collected devices. Okay, most easiest we can say throughout the syllabus. It was not like that before. Last three years onwards, semi-collected device chapter. It was just cut short as many. So tough topics, everything they deleted, filtered out. Only easy topics are there. Okay, from EM waves, valuable three marks you can score. So no need of any long answer type questions there. Then semi-collected devices, valuable seven marks you can score. So we are aiming for 10 marks in this last session. Okay, question number 91 onwards. So, hope all of you are ready. Great. Yeah, all Ashmita is there, Smriti is there, Venkata is there, yeah, yeah, Sanj is there, Kavi is there, yeah, Adul. Great, great, great. So, be stay tuned. Very easiest question electromagnetic waves. See, if you go to the analysis, three major topics are there displacement current, electromagnetic waves, and electromagnetic spectrum. Three most important areas. So, the most of the time, you can see the third part. More number of questions came from that part only. That means electromagnetic spectrum. So what the arrangement of the spectrum in the ascending or descending order? Many times we discuss in our theory classes. You might remember it. So that's most probable area. Then comes electromagnetic waves. The properties of the waves like or uses of the waves. That's everything will come there. Then displacement current here and there a few questions also came. But not a regular like that. So most that spectrum and all. So are you ready? Let's go for the run. Yes. CNA, yeah, yeah, okay. So, first question. Arrange the following electromagnetic waves in decreasing order of their wavelength. One of the many times this type of question repeated. So, that's my first question, the wavelength in decreasing order. So, the spectrum, suppose in increasing or decreasing order, the wavelength, one code, you can just keep it G, X, U, V, I, M, R. GX UV IMR. That code, if you keep in mind, easily can answer it. GX UV IMR. G for gamma rays, X rays, ultraviolet, visible light, infrared, microwaves, and radio waves. This is in ascending order of the wavelengths. So this is a high end and this is a low end. So ascending order of wavelength it is. Got it? Now, in this question, see. So GX, G is the least wavelength and highest frequency. Our radio wave is the highest or longest wavelength in this total spectrum. So here see, come on. Decreasing order of the wavelength. So bigger to smaller you have to do. Come on. 
Yeah, great. Ashmita, we got, yes, great, great, great. So, we have gamma rays, infrared, x-rays, and microwaves. So, of course, you know, microwave is in the higher side. First one, microwaves. Okay, then comes, yes, infrared is a IR. Then comes, yes, x-rays is a, and then last, the gamma rays. Is it? Gamma rays are the least, so decreasing order of wavelength, greater to the last. So descending order is fine. Simple. So here, this code, please keep in mind. If anybody is missing this code, GXUVIMR, nothing, the first letters of each waves. GXUV, IMR. Three times you chant in your mind and that's done. One sure mark of sin you can get it. GXUV, IMR. Okay? Gamma, X-ray, ultraviolet, visible light, infrared, microwave and radio wave. The ascending order of wavelength. Then for frequency it will be reverse order, you know. Okay? So next question, let's go. Name the electromagnetic waves which maintain the Earth's warmth and are used in aircraft navigation. So two uses they are asking and two waves name is sir. So it's also accompanied by electronic spectrum and their uses actually. So hope you might be doing it. Yeah. Yes, great, great. The maintain the earth's warmth. The atmosphere warmth is there. And used in aircraft navigation. Two waves. Yes, yes. Great. Yeah. So air Earth's warmth is actually by infrared rays. IR rays are there. They are called heat waves actually. IR waves. Infrared. That's the first one. And aircraft navigation. That's done by a radar, you know. So radar uses what? Microwaves. So IR waves and microwaves are the correct answers. Yeah, most of you correct did it. Great, great. Uh, okay, Ashmida, IR and UV. UV is, IR is not there for, uh, IR is for remote control, so you can use it. But aircraft navigation, you have to use microwaves, radar actually. Yeah. Uh, Selma, Shihab, uh, Snowflake, yeah. Radio, no, the microwaves are there. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, yes, yes, King Bar. Is there courage? Then flip-flop. Okay. Yes, great, great. Okay. Let's go for the next one. So, uses is very important. For each spectrum members, you should do at least two, two uses. You should go through it. Okay. Let's go for the next. Which segment of the electromagnetic waves has highest frequency? Highest frequency. Yes, now I told the least wavelength. Least wavelength of highest frequency. So, which segment? The gamma ray has the highest Frequency there. So first one is gamma rays. How are these waves produced? So production of gamma rays. You know, nuclear reactions or radioactive elements, they produce gamma rays. So radioactive decay or radioactive reactions actually, the nuclear reactions are the cause of production of gamma rays. So energy is released from the radioactive nucleus in the form of gamma rays. You might have studied alpha particle and beta particle. You may have heard about. Whenever there is an alpha decay or beta decay. So just before in the nuclear chapter, you might be done. Nuclear fission and fusion. So that reactions and all, if they combine to form more stability, they emit these particles. Hence, they will be emitting gamma rays also with that one. So gamma rays by nuclear. Give one use of these waves. Yes, of course. Cancer treatment. Yes, fine. Great. So, chemo, you know, radioactive decay, means this gamma rays can be used to kill the cancer cells. We can use it in gamma. And nowadays, it can be used for medical diagnosis also. Gamma ray cameras are there, which can be used to detect the internal organs, any failure is there or not for that purpose. Very minute level, radioactive element will be injected to the part where you want to take it. Then when they emit gamma rays, I mean, it will be detected by gamma ray camera. Very minute level will be. So, it's used in medical purpose. Diagnosis purpose also, it can be used. Okay. Now, second one. Which EM wave lie near the high frequency end of visible part of EM spectrum? High frequency end of visible part. So, you know, the case G, X, U, V, I, M, R is there. So, frequency range, this is the visible part. For visible light, the 
frequency range is this way, higher frequency in this region. So near to high frequency end, we have the ultraviolet. Low frequency range, we have infrared or wavelength, the opposite. Longer wavelength, infrared, lesser wavelength, ultraviolet. So that code, the same code, GX, UV, IMR will help you for that. So it is ultraviolet. Now, give it one use. In what way this command of light has harmful effects on humans? One use, many uses you can have. It can be used to kill germs or microorganisms in our drinking water. UV treated drinking water, the bottled water, you may be seen it. Is it? Water dispensers also some uses, ultraviolet sources. Then UV lamps are we have, is it? So like that uses you can get it. Yeah, great, great water filtering. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah, causes of ozone depletion also. It's fine. Yeah, great, great. So harmful effect on humans, how it's making up. Many ways are there. Direct if you are exposed to UV rays, we have skin burn. Then skin cancer it may cause us. Wrinkling of skin it can cause us. So this all happen. Even direct exposure to eyes also will be harmful for us, our eyes. UV rays exposure. Okay, fine. So only you know, this UV rays can be protected by using UV glasses are there. Specs are there special mentioned. Can be used it. Okay, but we cannot see this one UV rays. Because our eye can perceive only this red, blue, green colors only. So we cannot see the UV rays, but it can be exposed so that it will be harmful to our eyes too. Okay, great. And that application based questions only. So you should use that uses of each spectrum members. Okay, fine. Let's move to the next question. In a plane electromagnetic wave, the electric field oscillates with a frequency of 2 into 10 raised to 10 per second and an amplitude of 40 volts per meter. So, electric field concept is given, the E0, the value is given 40 volt per meter. And the frequency is given nu is equal to 2 into 10 raised to 10 per second, that is hertz. You have to find what is the wavelength of the wave. For EM waves, all of the members travel with the same speed, you know, that is C. So, for we have the equation C is equal to nu into lambda. Speed is equal to frequency into wavelength. And the value of C, speed will be in vacuum, it will be 3 into 10 raised to h meter per second. One thing in common for all the waves, they are moving the same speed. Isn't it? So same speed means it will be 3 into. Then, so 3 into 10 raised to 8 is there. We have to find the wavelength. Lambda is equal to C by nu. So C is 3 into 10 raised to 8 by nu. Frequency is given. Here, 2 into 10 raised to 10. 2 into 10 raised to 10 is there. So, it will be 3 by 2 is 1.5. So, 1.5 into 10 raised to 10, if you take it, it will become 10 raised to minus 2. That means meters, that is 1.5 centimeter it is. That's the value of the wavelengths. Okay, fine. Yeah, great. Many of you got it. Great, great. Now, second question. What is the energy density due to electric field? So, energy density question. Energy density, you can get it. The second part. Energy density UE is equal to half epsilon 0 into E square 0. That is actually E RMS. E square. The energy density. Okay. Yes, fine. Ah, great. Correct equation. So, it will be uh, energy density. So, it is equal to half into. What is epsilon naught? The permittivity of free space. That is 8.8. 8, 5 into 10 to the power of negative 12 into E RMS square. So we have 40 is the E0 value. So RMS will be. So okay, that's effective value is given already. So with based on amplitude also you can do this one directly. Okay. So it's not mentioned actually then E you can use directly also the 40 square can use it. 40 square. So as it's not mentioned exactly, just mentioned and the density only. So that directly can use it. So 40 square is it. If you do it, it will become almost 40 into 40 is there by 2. So it will become, yeah, if we do, it will almost become 3.5 into 10 raised to square will be there. So it will be almost minus 10, almost, is it? That much joules per meter cube. And the density is, is that fine? Yeah. Yes, Anj, Kavi, yeah, okay, the, the previous answer you are giving. Fine, fine, fine. 
72.8 Ashmita? Half into 8.85 into 40 square. No. Yeah, okay, okay, fine. So that's our case here. Electronic man field, one numerical question. Speed, frequency, and valence range, then energy density concept. This equation already is studied in the other part also. Energy density. Okay. Next question as well. Okay. Some uh, regular lay added long answer type questions. We already done it. Answer the following questions. Name the EM waves which are produced during radioactive decay of nucleus. Yes, what is it? Gamma rays. Write their frequency range. So, frequency range if they ask for. So, wavelength range if you do, remember, then you can do. For gamma rays, we have wavelength is equal to lambda of the gamma will be in the range of 10 raised to negative 14 meters to 10 raised to negative 12 meters, you can say. In this range, the wavelength is there. Then you can convert to the frequency range. Okay? Then, welders wear special glass goggles while working. Why? Explain. So, you know, during welding, the light is produced maybe in UV or IR region. That's harmful to our eyes. So, to protect that, they are using the special goggles. See, why are infrared waves often called as heat waves? Give their one application. Infrared waves are produced by the hot objects. Hot bodies are producing these infrared. You know, during the preparation of barbecues, grilled items, we use these hot objects, is it? So that infrared is used to cook there. Infrared rays can be used in remote controls. AC, TV, these are remote controls uses infrared. Even night vision cameras uses infrared. IR photography. You may be heard about James Webb telescope. It uses infrared rays to take the pics. So, like that, many uses are there. Yes, great. Venkata, you remember it. Great, great. Ashmita, great, great. Okay? So, like that, general. So, uses of each parts, you should be ready. At least two each uses. Then you can utilize in the exams. Okay? That's fine. So, EMA spectrum, arranging, arrangement, is a normal question. Every customer you can get it. Then, normal numericals also you can use. These all are from past papers. Okay? Yes, so that's about the chapter EM waves. Three mark question is normally, so one one mark will be there, one two mark maybe, or three like that. One mark questions can be also, you can expect. So EM spectrum, please take care. Okay, I'm going to the next one, semiconductor devices. The last chapter of the whole session, we can do. Another one, easiest chapter. We have seven marks weightage from this chapter. So seven marks will be easy, you can score it. Because there is no much derivation type questions, no much complicated numerical type questions. So direct questions, please prepare well. Let's see the past 10 years analysis. Here see, the fifth point is the largest. And fifth point is semiconductor diode. Semiconductor diode is the most important. Diode means the diode, PN junction diode. It uses formation, everything will come there. Okay. So after this uses, rectifier uses, you might be doing it. Most of the time, forward bias and reverse bias, you might be knowing, their characteristics and all. There comes under this session, we having the questions there. Then, second one, almost, there is a rectifier, separately also can come the question, and then, PN junction formation too. Then here, intrinsic and extrinsic, here and there, few questions came, okay. Then, uh, classification like energy band diagrams, you know. Here and there, questions are there. So, that's only the chapter, is it? So, most of the important, that forward, reverse, bias, characteristics, then pain junction formation and all, rectify. Most important area should focus clearly. Let's go for the questions. State the principle of working of PN diode as a rectifier. Direct questions. See, the ESC. This all is this question came. Explain with the help of a circuit diagram the use of PN diode as a full wave rectifier. Draw a sketch of the input and output waveforms. Hope all of you might be done, is it? So, the working of PN diode as a rectifier. What is rectifier, you know? It converts AC to DC. So, rectifier is a device which converts AC to DC. And what is the principle? How is it working? It is based on that. The diode conducts only in forward bias. Is it? Scatters only in forward bias. That's the principle. Then explain the help of the circuit diagram how it is used as full wave. 
in a full work chair we have two diodes okay so diagram wise questions we are already there in the final session you will be explaining that diagrams and all okay you might remember it okay so that's diagram one then input and output wave forms also input ac forms should be then output as a dc wave form you have to make it in a unidirectional okay at this end of the session we have that special device session there will be a detailed diagram will be explained hope you might be done at any course you should prepare this question okay most probable from this chapter yes next question let's see yeah great ashmita is correct that's only yeah it's coming potential barrier the formation is there see 96th question said briefly the process involved in the formation of pn junction explaining clearly how the depletion region is formed so pn junction formation is asking so you have to explain that one okay it's also a repeated question okay this only men now we'll do it using the necessary circuit diagram show how the vi characteristics of a pn junction are obtained in forward biasing and reverse biasing how are these characteristics made use of in rectification a three mark question like that is came okay so come on pn junction formation so a p type semiconductor we have more number of holes in the p type semiconductor and less number of electrons are there in compared to just symbolic diagram this okay then an n type semiconductor if you do so it will be having more number of electrons density and less number of holes the concentration of holes and electron is like this way p type and n type all of you know when these two pieces are kept together two junction p type and n type kept together you know first because of the charge concentration diffusion will take place so first keyword should be diffusion so diffusion means the negative charged electrons as a majority in n type will come towards p region because holes will be moved to that direction is that that's called diffusion first idea diffusion happens okay great then next if because of the diffusion first layer will be changed here so here holes will be created and here electrons will be created the first transformation that's called diffusion now because of this presence of electrons here the next layer of holes will be attracted towards this positive charge layer that due to attraction due to electric field next charges nearby opposite charge are moved that's called drift current will call so drifting will be happening so diffusion current and drift current will be done initial drift current will be zero diffusion only will be there then drift current starts it increases till both diffusion and drift are become equal that's the formation of pn junction so when they both become equal we get a strong po negative potential across p region and a positive potential across n region so that potential which opposes the further flow or the movement of the charges that potential is called barrier potential okay so barrier potential is the opposing potential formed across the junction which stops both drifting of the charge carriers majority charge carriers so that stopped will be there that's called a barrier potential now again if you want to make this charges to cross it you have to give an external potential as we are doing in forward bias is it clear that's a you have to explain it okay fine good great so you got to have a bit that's a formation of this one so first diffusion current then drift current both drifting will be increasing and then they become equal they stops we get the potential barrier at that time okay got it fine then this region across this junction where because of this diffusion and all the charges will be fused together so they will be immobile they will be at rest that region across the junction is called depletion region so how depletion is formed so because of this mo mobility because they cross about they come to rest because of the diffusion that immobile region is called a depletion region okay got it yes good yeah okay next one we have uh, using the necessary circuit diagram so how the vi characteristics of a pn junction are obtained in 
forward biasing and reverse biasing. How it is obtained? So forward bias and reverse bias, you have to get it. Is it? For that purpose, the circuit diagram again important. Forward bias and reverse bias. So in forward bias, we collect the diode, PN junction diode, such as that the P region to positive terminal of the battery. So positive, negative. And N region, this N region of the diode to the negative terminal of the battery. So to study that one, you can do the variable resistor there and one milliampere across this one. So P region is sir, N region is sir. To study about the voltmeter, I mean voltages, you can conduct voltmeter across it parallel. Simple diagram for this. Then characteristics. So characteristics means variation of current with respect to voltage is called a IV characteristics in forward bias. So forward bias, the diode conducts the electricity. So there, one diagram, graph also you have to draw. So together graph, if you draw it, it will be forward bias. See, initially it should not start from zero. Initially along the y-axis you have to start with, then you increase it. Because till the external voltage is becoming equal to potential barrier, no current flows, that current will be zero. After that it goes on increasing. Okay? Yeah. Yes. Yes, Mr. Shamim, is there? Okay, Justine, yeah, fine. <laughs> okay, V and I is there, so it's increasing. Ready? Now, in reverse bias, what to do? Just change the value. So, here, it'll become negative and it become positive. Negative and positive change. And this, you make it a micro ammeter. Very minute current will pass through only. Reverse current, it's very minute or negligible, we can say. And if you draw the graph, it will be just a negative current will be there in microampere parallel to voltage X, then it increases suddenly. That's microampere it should be. And this will be milliampere. So breakdown voltage to that constant current will be there, then it increases suddenly. It's the cases. Hope you might practice it. So once more, take care to make sure you know about it. Circuit diagrams and the graphs. Okay, hope you got it. Are you all ready? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The next one, next we are going to. Okay. Distinguish between an intrinsic semiconductor and a P-type semiconductor. Give reason why a P-type semiconductor crystal is electrically neutral, although NH is greater than NE. So, intrinsic semiconductor and a P-type semiconductor. Intrinsic semiconductor, all of you know, is a pure semiconductor. Because only silicon or germanium atoms are present. So that is a pure semiconductor. There, the most important idea is number of electrons will be, because of thermal vibration, it will be formed bond breakages. So the number of electrons will be equal to number of holes in an intrinsic semiconductor. Semiconductor at 0 Kelvin, it is insulator. If temperature increases slowly due to thermal vibration, the bond breaks and electron get free. That place is called hole and free electrons can move it. So both movement happens. So hole current and electron current will be equal. IE will be equal to IH. That's about intrinsic semiconductor. Pure silicon or germanium. Now, if to increase the conductivity, this semiconductor we can dope with, we can mix with either a trivalent impurity, the previous group, that's P-type semiconductor, or a pentavalent impurity, the n-type semiconductor we get, 15th group if you dope it. So here P-type is asking, so if you dope with a 13th group element, like indium, gallium, aluminum and all, then we will get a P-type semiconductor. There, it acts as an acceptor level. So three valence is there for 13th group, and here four valence is there. If you dope it, we get a deficiency of electron that act as a hole. So extra hole is created. So, in P-type semiconductor, we have number of hole concentration is very greater than number of electrons. Number density of holes is greater than number density of electrons. And conductivity increases. Is that fine? Great. Now, give reason why P-type semiconductor crystal is electrically neutral, although NH is greater than A. So, there one confusion maybe have basically. Since hole is positively charged, and more number of holes are there, hence P 
P-type semiconductor should be a positive charged body. No, never. They are neutral always. Because when one electron is jumped out as free, negative charge, then that, that ion will be formed. If holes are there, so one acceptor is there, so that electron will be, I mean, ions will be negatively charged. Acceptor will only be positive charged. So equal number of positive and negative still is there. Charge in the case of charge. Okay, so NH is greater than NE. So, so far that acceptor is there, one shortage that will become electrically negative charged. So total will be same. So it will be neutral itself. Okay, you are getting the idea. Fine. So suppose this stylus is made up of N type semiconductor. What is the charge if asked? Neutral only. And if it is made up of P-type semiconductor, what is the charge of pen? That's neutral. Because altogether, there's ion concentration if you take it. Both are equal and get cancelled. Okay? Fine. The next. Distinguish between intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. Yeah. Just be done. Intrinsic means pure semiconductors. Their number of holes and number of electrons will be equal. Conduction is due to both of the charges. No majority, no minority. Current also both will be equal there because of that. And due to thermal vibration, electron hole pairs are created. Fine. Extrinsic and foreign atom is doped with it. Either trivalent or pentavalent. So that the number of charge carriers become majority or minority like that. Variation will be there. So conductivity increases. So due to both thermal vibration as well as doping, because of two reasons, the conductivity will be increasing. That's the benefit of extrinsic semiconductor. So, intrinsic or extrinsic, which is best conducted? Extrinsic is best conductor. Because more charge carries are there. Okay? That's a distinguished. Uh, Ashmita, which one? Extrinsic or intrinsic, you're asking. I'm sorry, I didn't send, send you a message. Previous one. Previous one means... This one, is it like a P-type intrinsic you mean? Please mention which, which term you are at. Like, yeah, second part. Okay, fine, sure. So, when do this one, if it is combined, for example, okay, one electron is get freed there due to thermal vibration. So, that place is called positive, is it? Then, if you doping, one acceptor is there. Acceptor level means, okay, trivalent is an acceptor is going to ask. Okay. So there, charge carries only majority is there. Once it is gone, the other ion will be negatively charged. Is it? Ions will be negatively charged from where it's come out. That way, total, total number of positives, total number of negative ions will be same there. If you add up, it will become zero. That way, it become neutral. Okay. So charge carries there are free charge carries are moving there. So where, where, from where it comes, that ions will be positive there. And from where holes are accepted is there, then ions will be negatively charged. That way total becomes zero. Okay? Fine. So, distinguishing what is? What are energy bands? Write any two distinguishing features between conductors, semiconductors and insulators on the basis of energy band diagrams. See, there's energy band diagrams. Very important. You should go through it. Most basic one is conductor, semiconductor and insulator. Then P-type and N-type semiconductors, their energy band diagrams also you should go through it. We will explain in that next session, like that graph questions are where separately we are doing, they will be doing. So energy band diagrams if you do, we have two bands, conduction band and valence band. The total energy of valence electrons is called valence band. They will represent by VB. And the total energy of conducting electrons or conducting charges is called conduction band. And that's what we call CB. Or energy of valence band EV you can write or energy of conduction band EC also you can write. Then difference between their energies, this gap we call energy gap or forbidden energy we call as EG. For semiconductors, this gap will be less than 3 electron volt. For insulators, it will be greater than that. Never it can attain. And for conductors, there is no gap. Most of the valence electrons are already conducting. 
So connection band and valence band are overlapped. So that idea I have to explain in this case. Okay, fine. Then p-type and n-type if you do. For p-type and n-type, we have separate energy levels, donor energy level and acceptor level. Donor for n-type, acceptor for p-type. That's the benefit that in the graph questions we'll be doing it. Okay, great. Then next one, draw energy band. Yes, the same question what I just told. Draw energy band diagrams of an n-type and p-type semiconductor at room at temperature T greater than 0 Kelvin. Mark the donor and acceptor energy levels with their energies. Okay, so P-type and N-type if you do it. So already it's coming in the graph part, will be detailed there. So P-type and N-type I told you, their conductivity increases. How it is increasing? Because of presence of majority charge carriers. Due to two reasons, charge carriers will be increasing. Due to thermal vibration as well as doping. So they become more energetic, more conducting. So, there and beneficial is there, one donor energy level, it gets just below. So, this is valence band and if it is conduction band is there, CB. Then just below conduction band, we get energy level for a donor. Then for this valence band cases, they are very easy to jump out. Then they can easily get to the conduction band. So, conductivity increases again. And in the case of P type, if you do, this is for N type and for P type, if you do it, just above valence band, we get an acceptor level, EA. Then we have the conduction band, CB. That's so, P type. Okay? So in detail, we'll be doing the graph cases. So that's about the topics. See, my dears, this is the last question of this one. And uh, we'll move to the next two sessions, device section and graph sessions. Before that, one Mendy Bar also is there. So uh, guys are there. We'll do it. Hi. Good evening. So active participation. Now, like last, we are going into the last 24 hours of preparations. So before that, two more sessions are there, like graph and circuit diagram discussion. And let's check our Mendy is working or not now. So Nisar is working on that. So guys, thank you for being with us for the last, it is yeah. almost four hours today also. Uh, many <coughs> students yes, sir. are actively participating from the beginning, 5 o'clock onwards, which shows that your interest uh, in towards the subject and your curiosity, like uh, want to score good marks. Surely all of you will rock in the exam. Sure. So, uh, total 70 marks parts we have discussed. Definitely, do your best with all these previous year questions, of course. Wherever the devices are there, focus on it. Sure questions we mentioned here, focus on it. You can see most of them in your question paper. So definitely will be a great successful date, the final lap. Now what to do? Tomorrow is one more day in front of us. So wherever any patchwork is required, any shortcoming you feel, please focus on only that. Okay? So we will be getting up. So you can, this uh, live videos will be available on our YouTube channel already. And already we done previous MCQ challenge also. All the chapters is available there. Please practice for the MCQs too. We have... 16 MCQs in beginning and two case based questions also. So like the total 24 marks, one more questions are there. Is it? So that also will help you for the MCQ challenge questions for chapter wise. Please go through that also. It's available in our YouTube channel, Blend Qatar. So go through it. Please prepare well. Okay. So tonight almost it's late night. How to have sound sleep today? Then tomorrow early in the morning I will start with. So before that, two more sessions we are doing. The Monday war. Okay. And... Uh, this uh, mm, graph and uh, device questions also will be doing. Okay, fine. Guys, just one more minute. We are setting it up. Be ready with your devices. Uh, I'll give you the code soon. And we are just getting into that account. Yes, okay. Sorry, so yeah, dot was please be okay. Please be online that when you then after that we go to that uh, graphs and devices. Okay, any technical error, sir? That's one, yeah, we are not able to get, get into that. So let us try once again. Yes, Hannah is there, yeah. Yeah, please, please, please. 
Abu, all are there some uh, nicknames as well there? Zayed, yeah. Ruben, even Dulkar also attending our live session. Yes, Ashmita, please wait. Hamid, yes. yeah, yes, it's fine. Yeah, I think we can just go on. Yeah, yes, great. Okay, great, guys, great, great, great. Great. Uh, we are just going to do that now. <coughs> Hope you can see on the screen. <coughs> go to menti.com just like before. Yeah, so you can see the code 7542-0908. Okay, just uh, join fast, waiting for the players. Nobody joined it. Yes, just, just get in. We have just 10 questions from uh, Modern Physics. Yeah, 5 plus ready, 8 plus ready, 10. Yeah, carry on, 14 dial. Please, all of you join fast. 21 players, 22, 25. 31 players now, come on, all of you. Okay. Right, uh, 35, 36, come on, once you are all in, we will start, okay? Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, you are. And I uh, joined already. 38 players are there. It's pinned in the comment. You can yeah. see that. So it's pinned in the comment. 7542 Yes. 42, 43, 43, 44. Yes. Come on, come on, come on, come on, guys. Come on fast, fast. Those who could not join in the last game, we have to roll this time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Atul, are you there? <coughs> you could not join for that. Ah, he was feeling difficult in the last previous one. So, okay, now, technical, please. 46 are there now, and come on, come on. Use your real names, okay? Last time, uh, <laughs> like those who scored, like, you know, first for Sai, right? Sai, yes, Sai, Sai. I got a message from yeah, him. He was yeah. using some other name. Okay, he changed it now. Yeah. Now Sai is his same name he done. Okay, 46 players are ready. Yeah, other is there, yeah. yeah Sara. Uh, Flip-flops. Yes, join, join, join. Please join, give, give your exit. Still people are getting mm. in. 46 players ready. I think we can start. Sir. Yeah, yes. okay. <coughs> They're still trying to join, so that's why. 47, 47, yeah. Yes. Yes, okay. Anyway, we, we cannot wait much, right? So let us start. Yes, sir. Okay, see, uh, you know the rules, right? We'll be getting the question here. This is the question number one. Go to it. We have 15 seconds. Time is reduced. Yes. Competition is high. So we reduce the time of response, like, you know, make it fast. Make it fast. Which of the following is not the property of photons? Two, one, zero. Yes. See, uh, rest mass was the correct answer. Twenty noun uh, out of forty-seven mass of total participants. Yeah, forty-seven. Yes, 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 yes. Great job. Great job. See, uh, momentum. There are uh, entry from two entries for momentum. Photon has photon momentum. Energy. Yes. <laughs> photon has energy and momentum. Yeah. Photon doesn't have rest mass. You can say it doesn't have charge also, right? But the charge was not... Okay, done. Great, great. Yes. Okay, let's okay. go for next. That was the first question. <laughs> Be ready for the next. Question number two. See, answer fast. How fast you respond also matters, okay? The stopping potential points to it. Yes. depends on dash of incident light. Free, the stopping potential depends upon dash of incident light. light. Yes, yes. Right. Four, three, two, one, and that's it. Oh, that's good. Very good. Yeah, great, Frequency great, great. and see, don't be confused. Intensity was one. Ten entries are there, right? Intensity, I mean, uh, stopping potential is independent of intensity. We know it depends only on thirty-eight frequency. Yes, yes. thirty-eight responses from the correct uh, option, but still we have ten wrong answers. Be careful, guys. Coming to the next question. Yes, <coughs> third question. Question number three. An electron is accelerated through a potential difference of 100 volt. The wavelength associated with it is. A regular question. Two, one, zero. Yes, but the entry is very less. See, oh, only 32 okay. responses. First time, like the top one. Yes. 
confused with the unit yeah yeah that's maybe the unit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Some, some was mm-hmm. nanometer some yeah. millimeter yes uh-huh. they didn't get much time to think about the they units that more maybe. time surely yes yes, 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 yes. yeah so uh, that 15 second was a little short i know but still we got 14 correct entries mm-hmm. okay yes challenging question challenging with the, in the in the sense of time okay not like difficulty level mm. that was little challenging okay ready for the next question number formula is yeah we did the same question yeah same done ah that's fine okay great so they knows yeah. and that is yeah, because yeah, of the time it. limit maybe fine, 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 the, yeah. the confusion okay Yeah, outer mall, outer orbit to the inner mall orbit. Yeah, okay. Orbit. Let them respond. Yes, two, one, zero. Yes, we have lots of entry. Okay. Yeah, most of them are correct only. Innermost orbit means n is equal to one. So everything coming back to the first orbit is nothing but Lyman series. Nothing to be confused. I don't know what happened for these sixteen entries, right? Yes, outer most. So they couldn't get time to pro- read properly. Number of flies increase, sir. Forty-nine to fifty like that is yes. going on. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So moving on to the next. Come on. Be careful. nothing to be calculated just select the option properly okay read the question electron in hydrogen atom is excited to n is equal to 5 state the number of different frequencies mm. of radiation which may be emitted yes number of transitions possible yes number of transition possible 6 5 4 3 2 1 and the answer is 10 yes See today you discuss one question. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah same, same question. Not mm-hmm. same, like a similar yeah. question. Look like same. They know the equation. Mm. I hope. But for, uh, yes. around sixteen of them <laughs> made it five itself. Yeah. Let's see. Mm. Moving on to the next. Okay, guys, let's go faster. Now fifty-three players are on ready. Yes. Next question is the difference of energy levels goes on dash as we move towards the higher energy levels. when we go to the higher energy levels what happened to the difference in energy you have options the De- increases decreases remains the same and first increase then decays yes somebody asking can the time be increased but it's really competitive so yeah, yeah. this time we reduce the time purposefully we don't have any calculations right all of them are yeah. conceptual yeah questions. yeah conceptual yeah. <laughs> read the question choose the correct answer that is why i told you combination is tight this time mm. yes decreases correct answer is decreases and we have Uh, wrong entries also because mm. that may be the time issue. I think mm. they uh, by committing mistakes. <coughs> Seven out of ten. The next question, seventh question, is here. Minimum energy required to excite a hydrogen atom from its ground state. Is yeah, that. Yes. From the ground state, energy required to excite. Minimum energy required to excite. We have all entries in this one. Right, ten point two is a correct answer. That Equal is, number of yes uh. to the very next energy level. Right, that is the least energy required from the first from the ground state. Minimum energy transition is to the very next energy level. Thirteen point six <coughs> minus three point four. So that is going to be ten point two electron volt. Okay, that is a correct answer. Yes, fine. Question number eight. Binding energy per nucleon is maximum four. Fp sixty five, Fp forty five, Fp fifty five, and Fp fifty six. Most stable element. Yes. <laughs> Nucleus. Response is coming slow. Right. Three, two, one. Come on. Yes. Great. Oh, Fp sixty five, twelve entries. <laughs> What is that? Yeah. Yes, confused. So, Fp they know actually. <laughs> If we then no, so if this again, this is like like you know after selecting the options only they see oh there was another one like yeah the six and five they see yeah yeah that's why so be careful. okay don't worry be careful be careful be careful right okay so it's Moving. a fun game also <laughs> ninth question yeah. question number nine <coughs> two nuclei of mass numbers one twenty five and eight has a ratio of their density. There tends to be. If anyone commit mistake in this question, I'll kill you. Yes. <laughs> you just done the last question, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Let me see how many responses are coming. Yes. Yeah, great. But few of them is there. Still, we have nine plus three, twelve plus six, eighteen. Eighteen <laughs> wrong entries. Yes. See, density yes. independent of 
independent of mass number we did the same question we discussed the same one is question. one <laughs> yes one is to one right yeah. okay moving on to the next last question last question <coughs> Okay, maybe due to some technical glitch, you are not getting the exact time. Phil, still. Yeah, he is typing the answer here only. You may not get the time to. Uh, answers are coming in the comments. Okay. Yes, please. Abhi is asking this time. Okay, for the timing. Right. Two nucleons inside a nucleus. What is the equilibrium distance between two nucleons in a nucleus? <coughs> ah, that is a beautiful graph, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, 23, 0.8 FM is the correct answer, right? Binding, I mean like potential energy so, so, okay, versus internucleon distance. Those are not able to enter there, they are typing the answer here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. Yes, so th they may not be able to join the, like you know, maybe, maybe the problem, yes. Technically, maybe. Okay, okay, anyway, uh, that was the 10 questions. Like, Saif, are you there? <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's see who is going to win this time. Uh. Uh, <coughs> 10 questions. And the lead board is going to set up soon. Come on, come on, Nia, <laughs> Tash, yes, Tash. who is this guy, Tash? <laughs> Tushar, is it Tushar? Congratulations, yes, I think it is, is it Tushar, I don't know. Yes. Is it Tushar, are you there online, come on. He will take the responsibility soon, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Yeah, Tushar, are they... no. no, there's another one, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, that was the first, and ex Zabi, Zabi, so Mohammed Zabi, I think, and he's here, Saad, Nia, Sean, Chris, like that is the order we get. Then Sean. Oh, it's Fahad. Tushi is Fahad. Okay, Abu is typing. Tushi is Fahad. Ah, okay. So <laughs> okay. That we have to do. Uh, re reveal your face there. That's what I told you. Ah, yeah. Mohammed Zabi is there. Okay, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, Zabi. Yeah, Zabi. I don't know. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. And Chris is there. Sean, like, you know. Okay. Sinan. So these are the order. Fine. Guys, I know that time was not enough. Anyway, right. Uh, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's go back to the slides soon. We have to quickly finish it off. Yeah. Like you know, this uh, graphs and uh, devices questions. So first we have to start with the graph. The graph, sir. Mm. Please come on. I thank you. So it was a fun game actually. So we are uh, quickly we will finish the graph things. Okay. So the wave pattern, electromagnetic uh, waves. You know. So while drawing, please make sure that these two are perpendicular to each other, and you have to show the direction of propagation is both perpendicular to both electric field and magnetic field. Okay. So this easy graph. Don't yeah, draw like get, one. We get questions to draw this graph. Sure. So make sure you are okay with this. You, you, you know how to draw that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Intensity variation. It's also a repeating question. Yes. So Wave just objects. directly they will ask draw the intensity variation curve for both interference and diffraction. You know that in interference pattern all the bright bands are having the same intensity. So the graph will be like this and in diffraction the central bright will have maximum intensity Principal then it keep maxima, on yes. decreases. And decreasing okay. gradually yes into zero. Right. Yeah. And you have to check the what is it with variation with either they can ask with phase difference or can be asked with path, path difference also. Yes. So you have to exactly. check so that. Okay. Be careful. Check the question. If it is phase difference, go for this. Path difference will be lambda, lambda. In terms of lambda, can, yeah. That kind of thing. So Fine. Okay. Right. Next. Then, uh, then dual nature. nature. Photoelectric. Yeah. It's a chapter with full of graphs. Yes. You know yes. that. So many graphs. Yeah. So many graphs, many graphs are there. We can say uh, this is a straight line. Intensity proportional. I mean, photoelectric current is proportional to intensity. Basically, number of electrons emitted proportional to yeah. intensity. Yes. We explained this many times. It's okay. Next must be applied potential and current. Yes. Look, stopping potential is yes. independent of. Intensity, intensity are different, but yeah. same frequency, right? Different intensity, same frequency graph. Yes. The next one must be, yeah. One intensity, different frequency different graph. Different frequency graph. Yes. Yeah. So these kind of questions to identify, we did one question today. And uh, hmm. stopping potential versus Fine. frequency. Stopping potential frequency. And uh, remember, you are asked to find slope, means stopping potential versus frequency graph, slope is going to be H by E. That also we... Just mentioned in the sure. there y coordinate discussion. Becomes <coughs> yeah, y, y function by intercept e. is going to be work function by E. Yes, and there is careful. chance of asking here. So you need to be careful. Sometimes kinetic energy graph also they can and ask. They look very similar. Very similar, yeah. And slope the shape will be the same. Be same. Like, you know, almost. So we have the quantity will be different. Sure. H and H by E. And uh, yes. Energy That's level. The atoms, energy level. And I told yeah. you, we can remember these values at least the first four for uh, easy uh, like calculations. Uh, hydrogen energy level. Energy difference is decreasing. That was one of the question, right? When you go to the higher energy level, the distance, the separation is decreasing. Right. Uh, binding, binding energy per nucleon curve. Nothing to say more. We already have explained these sure. kind of things like this. Right. Very, very, very important. important. Just try to learn how to draw the graph properly. 
This is another repeating question. Yes. The most draw the graph. Yeah. Graph from that modern physics altogether. Okay, and the question will be: You, you should be able to explain nature of the uh, like nuclear force. Nuclear force based yeah. on that. Yes. Yeah. That also be mentioned at that time when we revised and energy band diagrams. Energy band diagrams we reached. Yeah. This and is also like a three mark question. Very easily they yeah. can. Yeah. So was, uh, this question was asked like. Yeah. Those was conductors. Explain right? or differentiate yeah. conductors, and insulators, semiconductors on the basis of energy band diagrams. Semiconductors. Fine. Yes. Okay. That. Uh, energy band theory to explain classifying. Sure, classifying yeah. classification. That's three more questions also. Yes, that's asked. Again, okay. Yeah. For uh, same thing. Uh, like uh, at zero Kelvin, right? All electrons belongs to that valence band. Yes. Conduction band no is empty. Yeah. No hole. No free electrons. No holes. Like you know, at normal temperature, they excites. Holes are created. Equal number of holes and electrons. Yeah. Intrinsic semi. Intrinsic semi. And is equal yes. to energy. Yeah. Yes. Right. And this is another repeating diagram. You know. You will be asked to explain formation of p-type semiconductor, right? With the help of energy band diagram. So acceptor energy level is marked. That energy difference you have to mark. So okay. energy band diagram of both n-type and p-type <coughs> yeah, semiconductor. In n-type you have to show the donor energy level. P-type you have to I mark. The next one must be that. Yeah. Like donor energy. Yes. Yes. Donor energy donor level. level. So p-type and n-type, right? These yes. graphs. Yes. You should be able to explain based on this. Then we have characteristics. That's yes. okay. And you know that's that, one of the repeating, repeating question. question from uh, you will be asked to explain both forward and reverse characteristics. Actually, yeah. this chapter is easy for them. Actually, yes. there is nothing. No and complicated they, numerical. They only they simple. The, yeah. Along the x-axis should go. Then after 0.6, it's up. Like yeah. Knee voltage, mm -hmm. breakdown voltage. These are the things we explained. Okay. And uh, uh, like you should be able to explain how the resistance is varying, right? Dynamic resistance you can mention. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So that part, you know, just refer the notes, make it perfect. Okay. Right. That's it from the graphs and now devices. devices. We have not much on. devices. Yes, we so have. Optical instruments. We have. <laughs> <laughs> As optical instruments, optical instruments, compound microscope from onwards, that onwards we started with. Yes, yes, like simple yes. microscope, you know, is just a convex lens. Mm. Especially compound microscope image formed at D and at telescope infinity. image formed at infinity are the two repeating cases, right, sir? Yes, yeah. so, so, Yes, so that uh, that too. And I'm uh, as always saying in class, you have to practice this diagram at home. Mm -hmm. Especially some students like will draw the diagram in answer paper, and they will get the image out of the paper. Yeah. So you have to then re draw, erase all these things. So it will take a lot of time. So practice it. Make sure that you can draw it in. You know the uh, size of your answer paper. So within that uh, space, you have to practice these diagrams. Otherwise, you know that importance of time. Okay. Exactly. Right. So we know how to start, how to draw the lenses. First, we complete this. Then only we introduce that. So we know the order. Just try to uh, practice it more and make it perfect. And this also one of the one. repeating yeah. diagram. Yes. And yes, you are asked to write the advantages, right? Yeah, advantages. Of this of refracting, this. reflecting type over reflecting type. Yeah. Yes. So that was from uh, optics. Then wave optics, nothing. Yes. No devices in uh, like um, uh, modern like physics. Modern complete. physics also. Yeah. No, then comes to the last one. This is important, very important. Most so, repeating application yeah. question from a semiconductor. Half wave and full wave. Both and half wave connection diagram and input wave form, yeah. waveforms. Then full wave rectifier, right? Yeah. This you have to learn. You can't skip. This Must. Part. Yes. No Same option. Same question, repeatedly coming from a semiconductor. Part. Yes. And I think that is That's the it. end of it. These yeah. many so, graphs, these many. Uh, uh, devices, yes, sir. Long sir, is there any sir. final tips? Like, guys, you are going to write the exam day after tomorrow. The first advice, like, I need to all the teachers will say something uh, don't be tensed in exam hall. It's a tough subject that you, you can score marks, but you have to read the question carefully. For the first reading, you may feel it is difficult, but read it carefully, be calm. Think about the uh, topic, think about the formula, okay? Then you guys can do it. Okay, don't think that it is a tough subject. I can't do this. I can feel the question will be very lengthy, but the concept is easy. And another thing, like the order that you are writing, that's also important. If you are not confident in MCQs, don't start with that. You can start with five more questions. Like okay. the you one answer that you are confident, start with that. Because, you know, creating an impression is very, very important. Very important, very important. You are time, time management. Time management. And time present the paper very neatly. Rare diagrams, no rough diagrams, and don't strike here and there. Present it neatly. Okay. And don't skip any questions. That's also very important. Uh, the teacher who's, who's evaluating the paper should not have a feeling that, okay, if I want to give Mark also, there Basically, is no space. Don't frustrate yes. him. Yes. Yeah, sure. Right. Keep in mind, someone is going to evaluate your paper. He, will, he should not be frustrated because that will definitely affect our. Like school, yeah, right. Sure. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, like, uh, 
like well, no, your comfortable uh, zone is also important if you're okay as just like you just said if you're okay with uh, mcqs just start with that don't commit any mistake in the first page like you know make it neat and clean there may be mistakes that you have to correct very neatly also right so uh, present it well we know the stuff and be confident we have done a lot of things that will be enough to uh, uh, enough for a safe landing of course and we hope this year paper will be easy yes, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes of course yes, yes. yes and tomorrow is a day it is you know it is the last day of preparation and you have to sleep early tomorrow okay it's don't sit till late night that will affect in exam hall exam is early in the yeah, morning so. early in the morning so, so you have to have sleep. proper mm. food yeah, okay so they can have for the doubt clearing sessions tomorrow yeah. you can come yes yes, yes. sure yes. Uh, mm. all our teachers will be available whatever doubt you have like you can message you can come uh, those who are here i mean around us can come there are students those who are attending from india also yeah. so all the best to all of you like uh, okay so, so our, our prayers will be there for you <laughs> all exactly. don't yeah. don't worry like okay i think they can think about our faces right when they are just <laughs> feeling difficulty yeah, in next sure, yes sure, sure. we are going through this modern physics some yeah. ray optics some wave optics yes our brain is saying it's already 12 imran don't worry you can all the best to you yes, you just yes, go yes. and sleep be calm tomorrow morning you can study so all the very best mm. Okay, okay and guys uh, if you have anything to share just leave message uh, tomorrow right you know as as jb sir said we will yeah. be available mm. so if you have any any uh, uh, like uh, you feel like you need support in any of the topics we have enough time we have one more day in between okay so make use of your time well go for the final lap once again have a sound sleep relax and go fresh to the exam and just make it right yes sure Come. all the very best to all of you we'll be doing it anything else okay. nothing so, nothing thank you very much okay, some some students were asking me, about yeah. our shamim sir ah uh, uh, yeah okay. yes, yes we forgot to mention that is sadly no like, actually without mentioning shamim sir name He's like good. he was actually our backbone but yeah. due to some personal reason he had to go to yeah, family yeah, yeah, yeah. he is there he is he every day is calling us and asking what about the classes uh, and he is attending the classes also sometimes he is coming yeah, yes, yes. in between right. and you can see his comments also shamim sir and uh, i like they have done without you and i we know it is not that complete anyway okay, you, okay. you should be with the team then only it will be complete yeah, anyway okay, okay you are uh, with us your presence is so yes. the entire brilliant team physics is here for you at very time so make use of it all the very best once again sir okay yeah, see, thank you for shamim sir is out of doha now so he will be back soon yes. yeah okay so thank you for or uh, thank you very much for being with us for these two days like you know for uh, four hours almost uh, yesterday yeah, four yesterday and a half hours for today was today is four hours, hours yeah. closed already and your interest and um, your love and support also your comments and their hard work like, like that your, is absolutely your active participation that leads us into this language sure. you know, of course so keep going don't Just, get tensed yeah. throughout the year you have done much hard work it will be fruitful you'll be getting the result <laughs> Okay. Okay. okay now so, no one wants to okay then yeah we don't have to keep them long yeah. a week just Bye. go and relax bye thank you, thank you. Bye. bye good night good night good morning good morning what's all this your results congratulations to all i am confident you'll all achieve your goals so young man what are your aspirations i want to do robotics ideally from the best institute in the us and you young lady sir I love kids and I would love to learn pediatrics. I feel Boston is the best place for that. Sumit, what about you? Back home to India for medicine. Good. I'm sure you'll all achieve your aspirations, be it in India or anywhere. Keep in mind, your first challenge is the entrance, whether it's IIT, JEE, SAT, or NEET. You have to learn from the masters. Brilliant Qatar. is the passport to your success. We undertake coaching for regular and repeat batches and tuition for board examinations. Brilliant Education Center, Doha, Qatar.